E-A-G-L-E-S, Eagles. For the first time in nearly a calendar month, we are here after an Eagles game saying they won. Yes, November 27th <laughs> was the last time we were able to do that. Today is December 26th. Hope everybody had a great Christmas, great holidays as well. That's Tony Shields. I am Rob Ellis. We're Sports Take, Jacob Sports YouTube Network. What's up, Tony? How you doing? I'm doing great, man. The holiday season is treating me well. Got some good downtime. Looking forward to the rest of it. But we're going to talk some Eagles football, football today, man, because even though they won, I'm here to be the bearer of some humbling news. You know what I mean? Like the, you know, we're we're going we're going to enjoy it. We're going to enjoy it, but at the same time, we're going to put things in. We're going to keep things in perspective, right? Yeah, that's the goal here. That's the I goal. can I can already hear some saying, but they won the game. I can already hear some saying, yeah, but if you're looking for this team to be a Super Bowl team, that kind of performance is not going to cut it. So we got we got a lot of people on opposing sides of this one. You know, that's for sure. Um, so, yes, they ended up winning the game yesterday, 33-25. to 25. Tone, this is a game they led 20-3 to three at the half. And it was almost – the amazing thing was it was almost immediately as the third quarter begins, it was like, here's your Christmas present. Here's your Christmas present. I mean, it was the you, – you could not choreograph that thing worse, that kickoff, <laughs> with those two running into each other and then – then there's just bad luck. I mean, let's face it. The Goddard slip is just bad luck. That's there's not, It's not a bad play by Jalen. He, yes, he's turned the ball over too much this year. I'm not killing him for that one. That's just bad luck. Goddard obviously didn't mean to slip. It just happened. But yeah. all of a sudden, that's 15 points right there. And the Giants have life when they should have never had life. And, yes, you were able to stabilize and get out of there. But, man, what a, what a weird day. And it really – I thought – Summarized a lot of what their season's been. I'm so glad you said that last point. It, everything that we saw when it came to the Goddard slip, um, uh, the the Looney Tunes level of debauchery on that kickoff. When you think about those two situations, doesn't it just sum up the entire season? It yeah. just sums it up. That, because that, there, that, there are really good moments, right, that you dig into and, and you love what you saw. I thought Swift right. came back with a vengeance yesterday. I thought he was so really, had a very really strong good. game. Yes. I, I thought Jalen certainly had his moments. The receivers had their moments. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, Covey, uh, Ringo looks like he can play. You know, there's there were good things for sure to extract from the game, and we will do so. But there are other things that how does Jalen know not know to get out of bounds with no timeouts? Right. Like, how, how can Jalen Carter hustle enough things. to get off the field? You know, Sidney Brown, I get he's a rookie, but, dude, you can't do that kind of stuff. It's sloppy, sloppy stuff, man. Yeah, what was it, uh, seven penalties, nine penalties? What was nine, it in the game? Nine for 65 yards. Nine for 65 yards. And here's the thing, right? When you think about 65 yards, you're like, okay, it's not the most amount of yards of the penalties, but it's how they got them. It's when they got them. A lot of their penalties came on third down, extended right. drives, fourth down. You know, so when you think about it from that perspective, you know, yeah, they they, they they beat the Giants at home. Um, they beat them, what, 33 to 25? The score really should have been, thir if anything, 33 to 3. Like that, right. I like mean, it's, it's 10. It should really have never even been this close. But I said this, didn't I? Yeah. I said this last target. week. Yep. I said, they're going to find a way to make it interesting. Yeah. They're going to find a way. And lo and behold, Merry Christmas. I know. I know, man. It, it is unbelievable. And let me give a shout out to. Uh, to all the folks, we appreciate you. Tyler, always, always a great leadoff man. Uh, Cody, Bry Guy, Kelly, Mike, uh, Am Reyes, Mood Swing, KC, Flexen, Godfrey, uh, Crowley, trying to get to everybody here. ARS, uh, James, if I didn't get to you, Mike, Bruce, let's see who else. Mo, uh, James, I think I got everybody. Shine. Who did I miss here? I think I think that's it. I think we got oh, oh Nafis, of course. Nafis always always great uh, hanging with us. James, what's up? What's up, KC? We got everybody. All right, uh, Barbara, hi. So anyway, uh, yeah, and, and the other thing is, Tone, they got help. They got help starting Saturday. That was the most important part of the weekend. If you yeah, me. because all of a sudden now, despite whatever went down and however it played out, because Dallas lost and because last night the Baltimore put a beating 
on San Fran. They just absolutely laid it on them uh, to the tune of Purdy throwing four picks. Now, all of a sudden, you know, you can see your way to a one seed. It's possible. It's very much possible. They can get, yeah. Eight, yeah. They can get a two. But, you know, they, they went from a five to a two with everything that went down yesterday. Right, right. You know, uh, it makes you think about the remaining schedule for, for the 49ers now. Because uh, don't they play the uh, – who do they finish the season off with? Rams. Rams and who else? Yeah, yeah. so the Niners go to Washington uh, this this Sunday. Um, and then they should, they should win that game. They should. I mean, Washington's completely cooked. But yeah. uh, they should. But then that Rams game, I know it's at San Fran. That's not a lock. No, LA it's way more very interesting dangerous now. dangerous right now. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, I agree. I I I think LA is one of the more dangerous teams in the NFC right now. Um, the way they're playing, uh, sure, sure they have the limitations, but if you that's the kind of team right now. If you let them hang around, fourth quarter, they can they can catch you. So so you know a lot of things happen for for the Philadelphia Eagles that were you know, that was beneficiary. Cowboys losing, Niners losing, Eagles obviously win. Um, it just goes to show you that the Seahawks loss. Is going to haunt them for the rest of the season, because if or, they or the Jets, or or the yeah 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 yeah. yeah I mean yeah. Seattle, you're right. Maybe even more because it's in conference tone. Maybe the yeah. Way, that, but here's that's the, what I was thinking about. The weird thing with Seattle uh, with Detroit is Detroit locked up the NFC North, but they're the three right now. Right. But the Eagles have the tiebreaker right now over them based on strength of wins in the conference as weird as that is. Okay. So wins, what does that mean? For- wins. Yeah. They win the tiebreaker over best based on strength of victory right now. But I think because the Eagles play, you know, the giants and the, and the, and the uh, Cardinals over the next two games who were, you know, essentially chumps, terrible three, you know, one, three win team, one, five win team. Mm-hmm. But because Detroit has Dallas, and Minnesota, both who have far superior records, that they could they could potentially surpass the Eagles if they win those two games. So anyway, there, it's a long build up to tell you you absolutely in all of this as, as hard as it is to swallow, have to be rooting for Dallas this week. You need Detroit to lose. Well, you know, I had uh, Detroit's going to Dallas for that game, right? Detroit's going to Dallas for that game. Yes. Yeah. So I mean, it's par for the course. Um, the Dallas Cowboys are going to beat the, the Lions probably thirty to twenty three or something like that. Thirty three to twenty. Which is so, they're they're dominant at home. Yeah, they don't win exactly. Them exactly. Dallas. And um, you know, I don't really. The, the Lions are a good team, but I still think they're a year early. Uh, but 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 regardless, as far as as far as the Eagles go, look, they came into the game, they got the win. Yep. They got they left with exactly what they needed to leave with, and that was a win. But there were moments in that game where we said to ourselves, this team still has a long way to go. You brought up something interesting earlier that really was a mind was mind-boggling to me. The Jalen Hurts um sideline run where he didn't go out of bounds. Yeah. You know, it's again certain things that have just been a microcosm of this season, the mental lapses and um the mistakes and they, they got bailed out because of a weird penalty from the, the uh the Giants defender, right? He held onto the ball and they called delay a game or something. That's like, it, never, it, it, they got a I've, break. That was I've a never break. Seen that before. Yeah, it was a gift. So when you think about it from that perspective, you know, you allow this Giants team to have some kind of confidence when you were dominating them from, from the beginning of the game. So the third quarter was a wash for the Philadelphia Eagles, and that's how the Giants came back into it. Mm-hmm. You fumble in the opening kickoff. It's just it's just, it's just certain things that that can't happen when you're playing a team like the Giants. You gotta you, you gotta beat them into submission. Yeah, I mean that game should not have been close. The Giants were there for the taking, and, and you know they they pulled the quarterback at the half. And and look, I think Tyrod Taylor is better than Devito anyway. But mm-hmm. nonetheless, you're you're down to your third, fourth quarterback, whatever for a team that was begging to be beat, that basically has one weapon in, in Saquon Barkley. Right. And to allow that 70-yarder late to Slayton was terrible. To, to to do all the things that allowed the Giants to get back into the game along the way was mm-hmm. unacceptable. And again, I know there's the school of thought. Like to me, and you know, this is where I was earlier in the year. A win's a win if it's week four or five. 
a win isn't a win when it's week 15 or 16 and you're looking to try to, to get this thing turned around for the playoffs when if you play Detroit or Dallas or San Francisco, you can't give them 15 points and expect to win. That's the me, problem that I have. Let me, let me ask you this, right? Has your confidence moved at any point um, after last night's performance? It didn't move either way, and that's not good because I, I, I come out of the game with as many questions as I had going into the game. Like there mm. wasn't there wasn't a whole lot of things that were solidified to me. Like like maybe maybe Shaq Leonard can play. You know, maybe it just took him a couple games to get to get acclimated uh to the Eagle system and new players around him and all that. And that's understandable. You know, maybe that's something. Maybe we're seeing the Keeley Ringo can play. Maybe they can they can they've shown themselves last night that they can run the ball again, you know, because they went for 170 rushing yards. Maybe there's little things that you can glean from that, maybe, but ultimately. I still see the same team that shoots itself in the foot. Mm -hmm. I see the same team that doesn't know how to put teams away when you get a lead that lets them hang around. Bad teams, mind you, not not even good teams. Uh, I see a team that still makes the, you know repeated mistakes. I still see internal issues. AJ Brown won't talk after the game. Devontae Smith doesn't want to hear the fact that he got a thousand yard, you know, went over the thousand yard mark. He's going to tell you how they're not playing good football right now. Like, mm -hmm. so there, there's a lot, there's a lot going on with this team right now. And I, I need these, I need it. These last three games to show me that they can get moving here and, and, and start to hit the, you know, the, the takeoff here on the, uh, on the ramp. Yeah. Um, I think, I think there's a lot of frustration on the offensive side of the ball because they look around and they see Jalen Hurts, they see Devontae Smith, they see A.J. Brown, they see Dallas Goddard, they see the offensive line, they see Swift doing what he's doing. Everyone's looking around like, why are we struggling of all people? And it goes back to, do they believe in what they're being taught? Do they believe in the game plan? Right. Do they believe in um, their leadership at the coaching at the coaching position? Do, do they trust it? Mm -hmm. And that level of frustration, to me, is damning. And how can we go into the playoffs with a team this disjointed, right? How can we how can we trust the outcome? Now, look, it's, it's still two games left to be played in the season. Once you get into, into the playoffs, anything is possible. Sure. So far, we already know San Fran's dealing with some key injuries right now. Trent Williams and Brock Purdy with a stinger. He'll be back. Um, and we don't know the extent of Trent Williams' uh, hamstring injury, I think. But if, I, I expect those players to be there come playoff time. But, again – you got some breaks over the weekend. It made your path to number one seed a little bit more possible. I still don't think they get it. But I can't go into the playoffs with the product that the Philadelphia Eagles are giving us right now. With confidence. With confidence. And that's, <clears throat> and, and that's the thing. Anybody who wants to pretend like they have the utmost confidence in this team because of who they are and the colors and the logo – that's just that's that's just not realistic. You know, we're watching a product, we're watching a team that's hanging on by a thread. Right. They they should have crushed the Giants, you guys. No doubt. They, they were up 20 to 3 at halftime. That score should have been 40 to 3 at the end of the game. They gave them 15, they handicapped them 15 points. Yeah. You know? Right. So and this is the time of year this stuff has to be getting cleaned up, Tone, rather than surviving an awful giant team. And that's that's what they did last They're night. Bad. Like, like the Giants are like bad. If the Giants were a good team last night, they probably win that game because of the mistakes the Eagles made. Yeah. So I'm holding this team to a standard that they set for themselves. They made it to the Super Bowl last year, right? You know, they started off this season 10 and 1. You know, how how can I be wrong? We're judging this team based off the standard they set. You know, we're not comparing them to the Bears or we're not comparing them to the Vikings or the Panthers. We're comparing them to the upper echelon, the elite of the elite teams. And when you're not playing well, we're going to talk about it and we're going to notice it. So, therefore, when it comes to the Eagles, going into the playoffs, we got two games up to get things together. I don't know how much things can change or will change. But as of right now, they are on a week-to-week -week basis. Well, yeah. So I, I think a couple of things. If we were, comp if this was 2021 and you were coming off a four win season and it was Nick's first year and Jalen's right. first year starting, 
that's a different then, circumstance. Yeah, you're not you're not looking at this with the same kind of critical eye. You're just saying to yourself, "Hey, man, they're they're going to be in the playoffs, and whatever happens is great. It's gravy." Right. That's not where we're at. You know, we're we're at measuring you versus yourself from last year, where you got within three points of beating the Chiefs for winning all of it. So that's where this is. There's no other place to go with this. Now they they have two games left, and that's the, the good news here is. There is still time to clean this thing up, I, in my opinion. Like, I, this is not – they can't do it. I just needed to start seeing it last night. But they can still come out and play strong the next two. And I, th- how I think it's going to play out, Tone, most likely is I don't think they're going to be the one seed, which I would prefer that. Obviously, they get a bye week. It's a less – you know, less games they have to play and all that. But the, the advantage of having to sort of play hot going in is you can ride a wave of momentum. So if they can get it going in these last two weeks against the Cardinals and the Giants again and carry that right into that first week, uh, there is something to be said for that. And I think they can get going here. Um, they're weird. The last two games are going to be weird. Like Gannon's going to come in with some intel on them, obviously, mm-hmm. from having coached that side of the ball, which will help, I think. But they're not talented. I mean, I, I was doing some some Cardinals numbers. I, so defensively, they're 31st in scoring, 32nd against the rush, and 16th against, 16th against the pass. And they're 26th in scoring and 29th in passing. Like, this should be a team you destroy, even sure. with the Gannon things. But we said that going into the Giants game last week, so or yesterday. So, it, you know, it, I don't know what to make. I don't know how to I, – I, it's hard to prognosticate this team and figure out exactly what they're going to do and who's going to show up. They play down the level of the competition. They don't know how to put bad teams or good teams away, quite frankly. So there's there's a lot of things at play here right now. There's a lot of uncertainty. And, and at, at December, we're almost into the new year now. At December 26th, we should have a lot more certainty than we do right now. Agreed. Like, what's their identity on offense, right? What's the, what's the identity of the team this year? You know, every year you're trying to carve out a new identity because teams figure you out, teams adjust, so on and so forth. Yeah. That's where this team has failed this year. They've they've failed to really carve out or establish what they want to do any given Sunday. Yeah. And that's something that comes from the top, right? That comes from the coaching staff and it comes from the front office, right? What is the what is the front office trying to achieve with this roster they put together? And then what can this what is this coaching staff, you know, trying to build, you know, with the pieces they've been given? I I don't really know what they I, I constantly see this. It, to me, it looks like a tug of war or a battle of them trying to figure out what they want to be. Are we? Do we want to be this passing team or do we want to be this running team? I I, I, I see conflict in what they're trying to be, mm-hmm. and it's and and it's affecting the efficiency of the play calling, the game planning. It's affecting the efficiency of the players, the effectiveness of the players. Something's um, off. Yeah, it's, it's something is something is off. On the, again, we know something's off with defense. It's not a question. It's a talent issue. Yeah. But on offense, the part of the game where we thought they would have the most success, something is clearly off on that side of the ball. I don't care what numbers people try to throw, or I don't care how much people try to laud over a Giants win, or or win over the Giants, rather. Um, like I said, this team, you know, let me ask you this question, right? Yeah. Have we ever considered the idea or the notion that the Philadelphia Eagles are ahead of schedule? Ahead of schedule in what sense? So they come off the 4-11 in one season. And then they go 9-8. and eight, And then they follow that up with a Super Bowl birth. 14-3, and three, right. 14-3. and three. Now, some would say, natural progression, 4-11 and 1, 9-8, and 14-3. Yep. and three. You increased your win total by five games each and every year since 2021. So some would argue that's, that that's a steady growth. I want to argue that – because of the jump Jalen Hurts provided from 2021 to 2022, has it given us a false sense of where he is? And has it given us a false sense of where this team is? And how? And also, we keep in mind this as well. Howie Rosen, Howie Rosen made a lot of moves in the short term to put them in position to win that Super Bowl, right? But now we see a year later, a lot of those pieces, a lot of those pieces aren't here anymore. So. What what Harry Roseman built for 2022? A was it sustainable? And B was this team was this team ahead of schedule? Because now I don't think they're yeah. Go, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. I, I don't think they're ahead of schedule. They're too old to be ahead of schedule. 
Mm. There's too many older players for that to be the case, for them to be just a bunch of kids who who overachieved last year. I don't think so, Tone. Mm. I, I think they – I think they've taken a bit of a step back, but it, it's not over yet. I mean, they took a step back. They've taken a step back this regular season, but they are mm-hmm. still 11 and four, and there are still two games to go. I mean, they could finish 13 and four with a dramatically harder schedule than they had last year. Yeah. The problem is if you're looking at it beyond just W's and L's, like if you're looking at how they, and, I, and this isn't a style point thing, it's just a projection thing. If, you, if, if they're playing the way, if they continue to play this way, I don't see a deep playoff run. Mm-hmm. But, if they get their act together the next two games, you know, and then maybe win a first round game against a playoff worthy team, then all of a sudden they start feeling themselves. Maybe they've made some corrections. I mean, I will say this, the, the turnovers that happened last night were not the prototype that we've seen this year where Jalen has a bad interception or some, or AJ Brown or Devonte Smith gets stripped or whatever. That's not what we've been seeing. It was, I mean, let, let's face it as comical as it was with the fumble on the kickoff, I don't think we're going to see that again. I really don't. Yeah. Um, and then, fair enough, ag- fair again, the other one was sort of bad luck. I'm not making excuses for them. They, it gave the Giants 15 points. But nonetheless, I, no, so I wouldn't say that. I would say that they're, they're – cl- I would say they're um, where they should be, honestly. And, and they, set the, okay. they set the tone last year and set the mark last year is what I would say. Fair, fair, fair enough. Now let me take it a step further. This coaching staff. Let's just say Nick Sirianni because the, the coordinators and DCs have changed over the past three years. Nick Sirianni, has the Eagles' success that the players have generated, has their success given us a false sense of what of where Nick Sirianni is as a head coach and who he is as a, as a head coach? That's is possible. That, is that the better question? Yeah, I think that's a good question. I think right now we're seeing some things internally that you worry about. Um, you know, are, are they able to scheme their way out of some of the issues? Is there communication issues? Are guys pissed off, you know, for, for certain reasons, for whatever reasons uh, that, that get behind it? Look, some of this too is I, I've seen people in the chat talking about some of the things that were going on on the sidelines. Um, I will say this. That kind of stuff takes place a ton during a game where coaches and players might get into a, a little heated thing coaches and assist head coach and an assistant coach might get into it. I think there are a lot of things going on. My question with Nick would be, is there more to him than just that emotional connector, which is really important, but is there more to him schematically where he can get them out of this thing? Um, get them out of some of the predictableness that, that that's happening offensively, uh, you know, and they, and they obviously made some mistakes with the hires. I mean, there, there's there, they straight up admitted it when they when they pulled the plug on Desai calling plays, and we don't know yet on Brian Johnson. Um, so I think there are some questions along the lines with Nick for sure. I you know, agree with you. It, it, it's interesting you brought you brought up the emotional part of his skill set. Here's the thing: emotions are fickle. Yeah, and just as quickly as someone loves you, they can easily hate you. Hundred percent. So. Being the emotional leader of a team, that that's fleeting. When you really think about it in the long term, that's fleeting. Who are you beyond the rah-rah? Who are you beyond just having these quotables or just knowing what to say? Who are you beyond that? Who are you on paper, right? Like, what do you when, – when, when the emotions are fleeting, what do you fall back on? Can you fall back on your football intellect? Can you fall back on – um, you know, your skills as a head coach to put guys in position, right? That's the part where I'm struggling with Nick Sirianni right now. Because again, where are we now? We're in this, we're in a situation where the emotions are definitely fickle, right? You got some fans feeling one way, another group of fans feeling one way. Um, we've been pretty much, um, you know, uh, th- there's been a polarity between different sides of the fan base because of, because of people viewing this team differently, mm-hmm. right? Last year, I felt like we all looked at this team singularly. Um, we are we are on the same accord with this team that they are the best team in the NFC, one of the best teams in the NFL, and they belong in the Super Bowl. We all were on that same line of thinking. Now there are many more lines of thinking that the Philadelphia Eagles have allowed because of their play when it mm-hmm. comes to how we describe them. So again, I look at Nick Sirianni as a guy who, yeah, you may be the emotional conduit of this team, right? You may be a spark plug like that, but what, who are you beyond that? What do you provide when the emotions begin to fleet? Who are you when the team is feeling one way 
and the other side of the ball is feeling another way. Who are you? How can you balance that? And I don't know who he is, and I don't know if he's proven that he's anything beyond um, the emotional regulator of this team. Yeah, I mean, and the other thing I would just say to keep in mind, you know, when it comes to AJ, uh, you know, not speaking, being unhappy, I I couldn't tell you what set him off, you know. Um, There could be any number of things, but we know that this is who he is. You know, he's a guy who's who is highly volatile, highly emotional. Um, You know, like I thought Devontae Smith handled it perfectly. He spoke with the media, but he also said that, you know what, we're not playing well enough. Like when you do what AJ did and duck out, it it brings everything open for speculation. That's what it does. And it's, it's a lack of leadership on his part, but you know, you deal with it because you put up with divas that at least that's what we're told. So, I mean, that, that's kind of what it is. I, I don't, I, again, I still think there's enough uh, fortitude and guts and heart on this team to get it together. But, you know, we, 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 you're kidding yourself if you're satisfied with the way that that went on, on yesterday. I just, I really, I know you won and that's the end all be all. I get it but it didn't look like a team that was ready to start turning the page and get it rolling into the playoffs. For me, at least it didn't look like that. Um, all right. So let, let's do this. Let's come back. Let's let's, as we usually do game after let's dive into the both sides of the ball and, and special teams as well, uh, because there was some real good and some real bad on the special teams, but we'll get into all of those kind of things because the, uh, the running attack returned. We'll talk about Hertz. We'll talk about AJ Devante total yards was high. Uh, first downs were high. But an old bugaboo with the red zone returned as well. So let's dive into all those kind of things, Tone, when we come back. He's Tone to Shields. I'm Rob Ellis. We are Sports Take, Jacob Sports YouTube Network. Let's talk about Bravo Pizza of Havertown. Yes, Bravo Pizza of Havertown, family owned since 1985. I've been going there since I was a kid. Uh, they are open seven days a week. They have the most fresh and widest variety of food that you could possibly want. 20 different styles of pizza. They have slices to go. They have the you name it, they'll make it, specialized pizza your way. Not just pizza. They have fresh pasta, sandwiches, wraps, wings, salads. They're also committed to the community. They have fundraisers for charity schools, little leagues, where the proceeds go to those organizations. You could follow them at the Bravo Pizza of on Instagram and Facebook for daily specials and promotions. They're located at 1305 Westchester Pike Manoa Shopping Center in Havertown, Pennsylvania, 1305 Westchester Pike Manoa Shopping Center, Havertown. Give them a call right now, 610 610- 446-3810-610-446-3810. Bravo Pizza of Havertown. I remember getting my heart broken when they lost the Super Bowl in 2004. We were big Eagles fans. We moved to South Philly because of the Eagles. When they won, we went straight to Broad Street and uh, everybody was going nuts over there, and it was just a, a memory that you'll never forget. Go to get your game on. Go for the beers. Go for the cheers. Go for the hit and the hits. Go for the stakes and the stakes. Go to get your parlay on. Go to get your party on. Go for the scene, go for the screens, go for the gallery, go for the win, go to ocean. Visit theoceanac.com to plan your visit. At Pond Lee Hockey, we've recovered billions of dollars for our clients, and we're confident we can do the same for you. With over 250 years of combined courtroom experience, we've helped over 100,000 injured clients obtain some of the largest settlements in Pennsylvania. One conversation is all it takes to help you and your family get back on track. If you've been injured in an accident, give Pond Lee Hockey a call. They're carving them up and good play calling along the way. First and goal at the six. Field of life. First Trust Bank is there for you. Because Philadelphia dreams deserve a Philadelphia bank.
Underdog Fantasy has a way for you to play alongside your favorite football team all season long with their fantasy pick 'em game. You pick between two to five players, select whether they'll go higher or lower on one of their stats, then do what you usually do on a Sunday. Watch the games. You can win up to 20 times your money in a single game by going five for five. It's a fantasy game, and the sports betting show wants you to get involved. Go to underdogfantasy.com. When you sign up, use the promo code WIN, and Underdog will double your first deposit up to $100. That's underdogfantasy.com. Use the promo code WIN. Do you stream on a Roku, Fire Stick, Google TV, or Apple TV? Now you can watch 6ABC 24-7 with the 6ABC Philadelphia streaming app. For the big story on Action News. Search 6ABC Philadelphia and start streaming today. E-A-G-L-E-S. Eagles. We are back. We are. That is Tone. I'm Rob. We are Sports Take. Take a Sports YouTube Network hanging with you. Day after Christmas, Tone, did you get anything good? Did you get any coal in the stocking? Were you were you were you a good fella that you didn't get anything? <laughs> no, I didn't get any coal. Um, but I definitely got everything I wanted, man. Um, you know, I'll put it that way. Every, everything worked out. I had a stocking full of goodies. There you go. There you go, man. Beautiful. Uh, <laughs> all right. I'm glad. I hope everybody had a great day. Did it surprise you with anything? Uh, any any sweaters? Any button ups? Any uh? Any Cheerio? A, any Cheerios memorabilia? No Cheerio related stuff. I got um, I got a nice quarter zip Sixers uh, which I like. It's it's white. Maybe I'll grab it during one of the breaks. I'll show it to you. Uh, which was nice. Okay. They got me one of those. Um, got me a new pair of sneaks, which I needed. Some kicks. Um, okay. No, what else? I got a green sweater, which I wore yesterday, but it was very Christmassy. So that was, awesome. uh, I did all right. I did okay. good, man. I did good. That's, yeah. that's good. Man. good what time. about, uh, what, what, what gifts did you get the family? The My son got a PS5, which was his, he was pumped for. Uh, so okay. he's, he, he's rolling with that. He's got that already set up in the room and he's cranking that out. So we'll never see him again until he goes back to college, obviously, with that. Uh, <laughs> my daughter got uh, clothes clothes and more clothes you know so uh, it was good man we we had a good uh good christmas had to no, work no, uh, e- no easy big ovens no thank god man nothing <laughs> that had to be assembled okay um, my assembling days are done okay done uh, that's for oh sure. man no it was all good it was all good i mean and you guys you had you had family in or was it just you guys just you two uh so over the weekend my in-laws did come um you know for uh for a day or so but as far as Christmas Day, uh, just just me and my wife just taking it in, um, uh, watched a bunch of Christmas movies, played games. You know, we 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 you know just relaxed. It was pretty good. Good. Man. good. I'm glad yeah. to hear it. I'm glad to hear it. All right, so let, let's um let's dive into the offense a little bit. So uh, Gainwell, I'll, I'll start with this on the ru- the rushing attack. So Gainwell and Swift, and Jalen too to an extent. I thought they ran the ball well. Um, DeAndre twenty rushes, ninety two yards, four point six yards per carry, and a touchdown. I thought he looked like earlier season DeAndre. Mm-hmm. The cuts were there. The tough running between the tackles if he needed to. He had the hurdle move. I mean, he had everything on full display. I, even though he didn't go over the 100 mark, I thought he was really good yesterday, DeAndre Swift. I agree. I, I feel like DeAndre Swift was the game was the game changer throughout that whole game. I, I feel like DeAndre Swift was the player of the game for me. Um, oh, yeah. He, uh, if you ask me, he kept, he kept their offense on schedule um, for the most part. Um, he had big runs. He he turned he turned what would have been losses or what could have been losses uh, into big runs. Um, he was you know he was just a sight to behold. And then mm-hmm. and then you couple in Kenny Gainwell's you know he, he had a he had a key twenty two yard run. Um, Jalen Hurts ran the ball very well, but DeAndre Swift I felt like he was arguably um, the, the the player of the game. That's one of those things that and we mentioned in the last segment. If you're if you're going to extract things that you can build on. Next couple of weeks in the playoffs, there's one of them. Okay, you get back to being able to run the ball pretty well. DeAndre looked, you know, kind of uh, like he got his second wind or whatever. He looked good. Okay, Gainwell props six. It was only six carries, but 41 yards uh, get you over six yards per carry. So he looked good too. So the running attack uh, to those guys' credit, and I think to the offensive line's credit, they got back to doing something that they need to do. They need to be you know, a functional running team and a good running team. And, and, you know, Jalen had his moments eight for 34, which isn't bad. It's more than four yards per carry. They had their usual tush, push touchdown. 
which they got as well. So that's that's a positive. So after a really slow start, AJ Brown and, and you know and that's the other thing that kind of bothers me about AJ is like you know Jalen put one right on him that he dropped and went right between his hands. Like right, Jalen doesn't one. do anything to show him up, man. And and you know but. AJ has no problem having a temper tantrum on the side. Right. And, and, and you had 11 targets, my guy. Wow. You, had, you had 11 you targets. You weren't ignored. Yeah. And, and, and look, if you ask me personally, I felt like in that third quarter, they was forcing him to ball. Yes. That was the, 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 I, and, I, and I wrote that down while I was watching the game. I felt like in that second half, they were trying to force him the ball. And it, 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 it led to some bad drives, mm-hmm. you know, the fact of the matter is the offense was flowing nicely when Jalen was just hitting it, just hitting the open guy, going through his progressions. Jalen mm-hmm. Hurts, you know, he, he dumped it off to the running back a few times. Kenny Gainwell had a big 19-yard catch. Mm-hmm. Um, he, he even he even found Grant Cacatera, you know. I before, know. How about that? Before, before, Covey you know, had a catch. A catch. You know what I mean? Covey yeah. had a catch. So I, I, I felt like yesterday I saw Jalen Hurts just passing the ball to the open guy. Right. And, and allowing and allowing allowing them to make plays, you know, keep their down conversions, however, however you want to slice it. But my thing is, man, AJ, you 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 like you you gotta that whatever you feeling. Look, I understand the coaching staff is not the best. I get it. Trust me. And look, I'm guessing if that's what he's mad about. But the fact of the matter is, though, I won the game. Um, you led the team in catch. You, well, you led the team in yards. Um, you, uh, you had 11 targets. Dog, mm-hmm. oh, take it easy, man. And you got a guy who's looking for you almost every time. Uh, you know, I, I if his issue in any way, shape, or form is with Jalen. Jalen's trying to get him the ball, what, whatever. Right. So, um, Devontae, four for 79, had the touchdown. By the way, props to Zacchaeus for the blocking downfield. If you watch yeah, that, yeah, big, huge block. That, that was huge nice. Block. That was nice. Um, so, and Devontae, credit to him, and AJ's already done this, but Devontae went over a thousand yards and, again this and, season. And I, and I also feel like AJ got hurt in that game. He was hurt. I it was like that one hurt. play. It wasn't a great throw, by the way. Jalen Jalen kind of got him. He got he got smoked from behind. He and threw then, a duck up there in, in uh Yeah. And I think the rest of the game he was kind of feeling that a little bit. You could tell a couple same times he was kind of wincing after the after we get up after a tackle or you knew yeah, he wasn't hundred percent. I mm-hmm. agree with you. <clears throat> um yeah, so I think the, um I, th- I think that probably led into the some frustration too. It's like he felt like he kind of laid him out there to dry, but who knows? Who knows yeah. at the end of the day, but you're right. Devontae Smith, another thousand yard season. Um, a lot of people didn't think he would cross it because how things were starting um, yeah. in the first half, but I knew in the second half of the season, Devontae was going to come alive. I mean, it, it, it was par for the course. He's too good, man. He's just too good for, for to be kept down. And part of that early was just AJ Brown was going crazy. And if that's the case, it's going to cut into your, your touches. And I, what I love about, he's just such a pro. He's a pro's pro on, on a million different what levels. Mm. Um, it just goes about his business. But anyway, he so he goes over a thousand and and clearly look, there's frustration there, and they know that they can be better. You know, they they ended up with they still ended up with 33 points, but they view it as that's a game we probably should almost drop the 50 spot on that on that hot garbage of a team. Yeah, you know, two for five in the red zone is not going to cut it. That's the problem. And they so early they were bad there, and then they got it together really for for about a good five, six game stretch. They were much better in the red zone. I'm hoping this is just a blip on the radar and they get back to who they are next week in the red zone against uh, Arizona, because that's, that's the killer tone. Three versus seven is just, is just murder, yeah. you know? And, and, yeah. And also sidebar, you know, AJ Brown officially becomes the Eagles first 100 catch receiver. Right. Yeah. T.O. was hurt that year. You remember he missed the time after the, uh, the horse mm-hmm. collar and that cost him. He would have easily gotten there that one year. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah. It's a good point. Uh, look, they have two stud receivers, and right, like AJ, you're in the history books. Your team is uh, eleven and four. You're going to make the playoffs. You have an, you have an opportunity. Well, believe it or not, at the number one seed, I mean, gotta just gotta just roll gotta just roll with the punches right now. I yeah. understand. I understand the frustration. Trust me. Yeah, yeah. So there, that's most of the stuff we just laid out, other than the red zone. Uh, is the good stuff. They had 465 total yards. That's the second most that they've had all season. So you can see it. Like there's there's a lot of reasons to believe that it's there. It's sort of some of it's just lying a little little dormant right now. If they can just get their act together and clean up the the, the shooting themselves in the foot routine, 
then I would just like to see this team max out its potential. And I feel like there hasn't been a game this year. Tone. I mean, maybe, you know, maybe Miami or Tampa, maybe Minnesota, where they got close. But I don't feel like there's been a game all year where they really max themselves out. Mm, that's a good question. Have they have they had a game where they when you said all three phases were playing on 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 a high level? Mm. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I I don't oh. know that it's been there, man. It, it's just they have they have figured out ways all season to be their own worst enemy, and it, it's something that I that what troubles me is we're this far into it. Like we're sitting here now after fifteen games saying. Well, if they can correct this, if they can correct that, it's like, come on, man. Like that's why I said earlier, if this was week five, it's different. I look at it differently than I do now. You well, well you have to. I mean, yeah, this late, this late in the season, you're, you're going, you're going, you're going to have to see either the Cowboys or the 49ers at some point in the playoffs. You, this, this is the point of the season where you can't, we, we, we can't be, we, we can't keep giving our participation trophies to this Philadelphia Eagles team right now. They're no, better than that. It, you know, it's we just. Can't, made, we, we, Go ahead. They're trying to tell you who they are, and we're not listening. <laughs> I guess is the best way to put it. <laughs> we're all like we're earmuffs. No, 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 no. It's, everything's fine, and yeah, it's not, there's no issue. You know, that's what we're doing. You ever see that meme with the with the with the dog sitting in the burning house, and he's it's just like, and he's just like, tea. everything's fine. Every, everything's fine. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, you know, all right. But I would just say, like, it, it's there's varying extremes of this, right? Like, mm-hmm. I, I, and I'm sure you could go to each city. Like Dallas is sitting there saying. Dude, we can't win on the road. Like, we just can't win on the road, and we're gonna right. Have to and, on the that, road and, and, and that's an issue that they have to that 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 they have to battle. The Chiefs, right? They lost to the Rams. Yeah. Dude, the Chiefs so, had had two turnovers in a seven second span that that, that gave the Raiders fourteen points. Right. So, uh, what maybe excluding Baltimore, there isn't a team that's that isn't sitting there like, man, we gotta fix right. this. Right. So, and maybe that's a silver lining yeah. for the Eagles. Maybe. Yeah. But our job is to diagnose the Philadelphia Eagles issues. Not right. those other teams, right? Yes. And we and we look and when we look at the Philadelphia Eagles, and but and then we compare them to their counterparts in the NFC, they all have their they all have their uh their deficiencies to some extent. Yeah. Um maybe the most complete team, well, the most complete team in the conference is the 49ers, but they have certain quirks about them as well. Mm-hmm. That if if one piece isn't doing their job, it's like the whole house of cards comes down. Like they're very reliant on each cog. And if one cog isn't doing their job, they have a hard time pivoting off of that. We saw that against the Ravens. Um, the 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 uh, the Cowboys weakness, they can't win. A, they're not good on the road. They're not the same team on the road. It's just that simple. No doubt. Uh, the, uh, you know, the Eagles issues, offense doesn't have an identity and doesn't have any continuity and their defense is putrid. So we can quantify and qualify everyone's weaknesses and strengths. But overall, when you look at the Philadelphia Eagles, I think I don't I, I believe their weaknesses um, in a way kind of supersede what the 49ers are dealing with and maybe what the Cowboys are dealing with as well. What do you think? Yeah, I would agree with that. I, I See, I think that despite what happened to the Niners last night and Baltimore just went in there and punched them in the absolute mouth and they made Purdy look bad and on the road at that, they, they did a lot of amazing things. Baltimore's they're playing at a different level right now. I still think San Fran's really good. I think Dallas is a total Jekyll and Hyde front running team. I think mm-hmm. they're good at home when things are going well, they'll, they'll, they'll beat up on a bad team. That's what, that's where I give them credit over the Eagles. They would have disposed of the giants last yeah, night. Dallas without, without question. But I think Dallas lacks stones for, for lack of a better word. I, I think they're, they're, you know, there, there's, there's not a fortitude there that they have that I think the Eagles may have. So Agreed. I think that's the Agreed. difference. Yeah. Um, I but the bottom say, line is, you could pick apart all these teams. Really, you could really pick them down to the seams, and um, yeah. you'll you'll find something wrong with them. Yeah, I agree with you. I I, that, I agree. You you could dig into all of them, and it's going to be a matter of who cleans it up the most in the postseason, who cleans it up the most going into the postseason, and this is where. You wanted to start to see it last night, but you have to see it the next two weeks. Uh, you know, yep. We, it's going to come down to who on that day, <laughs> on that particular game day, who can limit their inefficiencies the most. Mm-hmm. Who can yeah. who can hide their weaknesses the best on that given Sunday? Yeah. I think that's what the playoffs are going to come down to. You know, and just to stay on the offense here, so they had twenty eight first downs compared to fourteen for the Giants, so they were able to to 
you know, move the chains here. They dominated them on a stat sheet. Dominated, dominated. Um, the the other thing is, I just saw this from Zach Berman of uh, PHLY. Um, so the Giants blitzed on sixty eight percent of Eagles dropbacks, which is the most all season anybody's blitzed them. Now this is where I'm going to give the offensive line credit and Jalen for his escapability. But yeah. on on the on those dropbacks, there was only two quarterback hits and one sack. So that you know that's a lot. I mean they that that's a great job by them by everybody considering how much they got blitzed. He did not get hit a lot, um, and they you know they only they gave up the one sack. So that's a good job by the offensive line. Which I you know the thing with the offensive line, I don't think they're they're as I don't think they they're what they were last year. I think they've I think Father Times kind of maybe hit them a little bit, um, but they're still darn good, um, and they they could still do a lot of things. I mean that that's. But that's the book on the Eagles is, and this is something that I think Gannon may get out of his comfort zone. The book is to blitz Jalen. That's the book. Right. And whether he needs to do a better job, you know, with his hot read, with because there's going to be somebody open, uncovered if they're blitzing, odds are. Or they need to do a better job calling it up and, and countering the blitz as well. Either way. But the I thought the O-line did a good job as far as that went. Yeah, over the past three weeks, he's only been sacked two times. Right. Um, so that's pretty good, all things considered. I mean, you only give up a second against Dallas. You only give up one sack against Dallas. That's pretty good. Right. No sacks against Seattle and one sack yesterday. And um, so they've been doing a pretty good job of protecting him, all things considered, mm -hmm. over the past three weeks. Uh, yet, I still feel like there's – there. There's something off with Jalen in the pocket and his mechanics, right? I mean, I don't see a guy who's fully playing up to his own expectations. Um, he had some moments like that. Keep like that third and twenty conversion was insane. Oh my god! It's I, I think it's one of the best throws, if not the best throw he's made all year. Like people will say that Zacchaeus touchdown, where where he was rolling to his left. Yeah, but dude, he dropped that one, that third and twenty. It was perfect. right it was in perfect. the bucket. It was yeah. a brilliant and he also bought himself time if you watch he climbs the pocket and then woof, it was a great i mean props yeah. to all platform throw you perfect. know that was perfect that, that, that was that was vintage jalen hurts right yeah, 100%. um that was him in his full glory so they have to find a way to bottle up that and align and the bill the, the fact of the matter is they got to find the confidence in the even in the ugly wins right yeah. they got to yeah. find the confidence and do you believe maybe maybe we maybe our confidence hasn't changed on the offensive side, but do you think there were some things in that game that the offensive could pull from and say, okay, we can build off of this? Let me give you another one that I like. I thought he was more willing to take checkdowns. Yes, yes, yesterday. I agree, one hundred percent. Yes, yeah, certainly than the the Seattle game or some of the other games earlier that they had lost. Like I, he, I thought he was, he wasn't necessarily. Man, I gotta get the deep shots. I gotta get the 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 you know the chunk plays and all this whatever. Term I felt like he was patient. Ultimately, I did too. Game. I did too. Like, there were a couple if, times. If I had to give any positives, he felt. I felt like he was more patient with yeah. allowing that game to just come to him. No, and that, and that's the thing. You know, Calcaterra camp. Well, I'm sure wasn't the the <laughs> the first option on that play. Right, right. I don't think Kenny Gainwell was on a couple of these. So that to me, it's like. Maybe despite what they said publicly, despite what Brian Johnson and Nick always want to tell you about the big plays and all that, mm -hmm. I, maybe privately behind closed doors, it was, hey, Jalen, just, hey, man, we don't always have to go, you know, deep. I know AJ's great. Devontae's great. Take what's there, man. Tom Brady made a living out of that. So, you know, we're, we're, we're good there. And I think that's a good thing. Again, getting back to the rushing game that you let they leaned on, I thought, yesterday. Uh, even, even for a stretch, I thought it got too far away from it, but they got back to it. All in all, I thought Jalen was pretty decent. I mean, his stat line is going to be impacted by a pick six that I really don't blame him for. So that's a little bit uh, of an issue. Again, I, I think that I think there were two things in that game that we won't see again. We won't see that awful kickoff nonsense that, that happened, which resulted in a fumble. I also don't think Jalen Hurts is going to make a mistake again of not getting out of bounds on that play. I truly believe that. Like it was a it was a poor judgment play. And he usually doesn't have that kind of poor judgment. He's usually very aware of what's going on. And I think 99 out of 100, he ducks out of bounds. I'm not sure what he was thinking. He made a mistake. But I don't think you see that again. Yeah. Um, another another person I was impressed with on offense was uh, Dallas Goddard. 
I felt like they made it a point to get him involved early in that game. Yep. Um, seven catches, 71 yards um, on nine targets. Longest catch of the day was 21 yards. I felt like I felt like there was still, I felt like there was so much meat left in the bones for Dallas Goddard to, yeah. to, to continue to eat. Yep. Um, I personally believe this offense is significantly better when Dallas Goddard is the focal point. I just believe he's the most dangerous person on the field because of the mismatches he creates, because of where he is on the field, his ability to just brutalize the seams and brutalize linebackers and safeties. I just believe he's a mismatch nightmare um, more times than not. And when he's eating, I think it makes everyone's job that much easier. Yeah, it's been a mystery all year. I know he missed time, but when he was on the field, they they haven't been able to get him in any kind of rhythm, it feels like. And yeah, I liked it last night. I felt like they were they were utilizing him a lot more uh, than we had seen. And yeah, it was nice to see some other guys get involved, too. It just it just felt like there was some some flow at, at, at moments. There were spurts you know, at, at moments of, of where this thing was, was getting there. You know, I, I think one of the other things, Tone, maybe as much as we all, the standard is last year, you know, with, with the comp, mm-hmm. I, I don't know that that standard's attainable for this team, just with the personnel that they have. I think they need to create a new standard. Yeah. Right. You know, um, that team last year, we're never going to see it again. Right. Yeah. That, 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 that was what it was. And I think it's about time we start to detach from what that was and focus on what is. Yeah. This team, instead of trying to recapture what they had last year, they need to find a way to maximize who they are this year. And that can be a battle in and of itself. You keep saying to yourself, well, last year, this, last year, that, that was then. Different circumstances, different teams played, different injuries, um, different, different play callers. It, it's just a different situation. So I think it's about time we start living in the now with this team. And I think maybe they should start the same, right? Maybe they need to really carve out the identity based on who they are now. Because the sooner, you know, the the more you run away from who you are, the more prone you are to, I guess, making mistakes. And based off of you believing you're one thing, in reality, you're another. So the more, the quicker we accept who they are, the quicker they accept who they are, the easier this ride is going to be going forward. Mm-hmm. Oh, agreed. Uh, listen, agreed. And I, I, but that doesn't mean you lower the bar and accept some of the stuff that we're seeing. It just means. Well, no, that, I don't think that. No, and I, I don't. I mean, I don't think that's what you're saying either. I, I, right. I just, I just mean that, you know, that it's still there. Like, I don't think, I don't think anybody in the NFC is unbeatable. I think San Francisco is good, really good. Uh, if, if you're, mm-hmm. if I'm handicapping things, I'm saying that t- the team you got to beat is San Fran number one. Yeah. But I don't think anybody's impossible. The Ravens may turn out to be just this juggernaut. I don't know. We'll see. Mm-hmm. I mean, Jalen or uh, Lamar's playing himself into into MVP every MVP conversation, yeah. despite not throwing a ton of touchdown passes. But you saw yeah. last night what he's able to do. Right, right. And, you um, know, and, and uh, j- j- just to clarify, you know, the standard for me at least is always Super Bowl. That standard doesn't change, right? I think what I, I think what I'm advising is the method. And how that's achieved, mm-hmm. because I think they've been trying to do things the exact same way they did them last year. And Nick Sirianni admittedly said this: they haven't done enough to pivot. They haven't Correct. done enough to recalibrate what they do based off of who they are from an offensive perspective, based on what they have, who they are defensively, what they want to accomplish, whatever yep. it may be. I just feel like there's a bit of. Hey, well, we did this last year. We need to do it that was like, yeah. Well, well, hey, we had so much success with this. You know, well, okay. Well, teams gotta, have countered. Teams have figured right, some of that out, have, man. Exactly. Teams have countered. So, again, the standard of Super Bowl does not change, but the path, how you get there, your identity, um, your calling card, whatever you did to get there last year, it may not fly this year. You got to get more creative this year. Um, you know, to, you know, to get to that goal, to get to, to get to that destination. Yeah. Yep. Fair enough. Fair enough. All right. Let's uh, let's go defense when we get back again. Um, sure. There's definitely some good things here. And I, I would say Shaq Leonard uh, headlines that for me. But there's a few others that, that you can you can take away from this. There are some some negatives. One sack is not acceptable against a team that, that gives up sacks like like it's, uh, you know, candy at Halloween. So uh, a lot to dive into. Don't go anywhere. Tone to Shields, Rob Ellis. We are sports take. All right. Let's talk about Jim Murray and principal financial group, because knowing who to trust with your finances can be a challenge, can be a scary proposition, right? But I can tell you from personal experience that I found the right people 
with Jim Murray and Principal Financial Group. And for you, it could be retirement planning, 401k review, insurance review. You might have a small business. You're trying to get your employee benefits off the ground. It might be something else. You're not sure, but reach out. Uh, and that's the, one of the great things that I find with Jim is anytime I have a question regarding anything, he either answers the phone or he gets back to you immediately and he breaks it down in terms that you don't have to be a financial expert to understand. I've entrusted my IRA, my 401k rollovers with Jim, and I couldn't be any happier. You will be too. Give him a call. 610-996-4751. 610-996-4751. Or you could email him as well. Murray, M-U-R-R-A-Y dot Jim at principal.com. That's Murray dot Jim at principal.com. Any professional sports coach will tell you there's no substitution for preparation. At Malamut & Associates, that is a tenet by which we live. We prepare from day one for victory. Anything less is not acceptable. Go passionately. Go fearlessly. Go confidently. Go first! <clears throat> Go confidently towards your goals with First Trust. Philly's hometown bank for nearly 90 years and the official bank of the Philadelphia Eagles. We're focused on getting you over the goal line. So go with conviction, go with trust, go first. and go forward with us by your side. First Trust Bank, the official bank of Philadelphia dreams. Oh, and go birds. Underdog Fantasy has a way for you to play alongside your favorite football team all season long with their fantasy pick 'em game. You pick between two to five players, select whether they'll go higher or lower on one of their stats, then do what you usually do on a Sunday, watch the games. You can win up to 20 times your money in a single game by going five for five. It's a fantasy game, and the sports betting show wants you to get involved. Go to underdogfantasy.com. When you sign up, use the promo code WIN, and Underdog will double your first deposit up to $100. That's underdogfantasy.com. Use the promo code WIN. Tony Shields, Rob Ellis, hanging with you. Sports Take, Jacob Sports YouTube Network. Hope you're doing great. Hope you had a great, great holiday over the weekend. All right, let's look at the defensive side of the ball, Tone. Eagles win 33-25. And really, if you take away those turnovers, which do not fall on the defense, the pick six doesn't fall on the defense, the special teams issue does not fall on the defense, Yeah, they really gave up 10 points. Um, The only problem is with the 10 points – was the in my opinion was the late what was it sixty nine or seventy yards whatever it was to Darius Slayton right, right. you know and just allowing the Giants oh they get down to, I think the twenty five on that final drive as well which ended up in the in the Ringo pick uh, at the very end you just like to see them be able to snuff out some of those teams especially you know you're talking about a team that really is limited you know you got you get fortunate with a Waller drop boy what it, what a terrible that move that was for them. You know, they traded for him. Not only is he just not that good, 
He's hurt all the time on top all of it. He time. doesn't make plays. He doesn't make plays. Yeah. The Giants, I mean, they're they're just a dumpster fire of just bad decisions and uh and misallocated um resources. Um, but you I mean you bring up a good point. The Eagles defense, all things considered, they really only gave up 10 points. Um pick six and then uh opening kickoff at halftime. I mean, the Eagles got to be better than that. I think that was one of the – that was easily the worst special teams blunder of the season. The special teams done has done a pretty good job of protecting the football. Mm-hmm. You know, um, I mean, even Brian Covey had a little bit of a bobble at one point in the game. He did. Yeah, he got on it, but you're right. It was a, a um, ske- sketchy moment there for a second. Right. So special team came with, came with its highs, but it definitely had its – Definitely had its lows that led directly to points, and then, you know, the gutter slip led led directly to points. So, yep, mistakes on the special teams and mistakes on offense led directly to uh, fifteen points or fourteen points mm-hmm. uh, for the uh, you know for the New York Giants. You can't you can't make those mistakes against good teams. Yeah, period. You just can't because yeah. you because you won't be able to recover from them. Uh, overall defense though. I mean, you held the Giants to what, under how many total yards? Like under 200 yards, something like that? What was it? Yeah, I mean, all in all, you didn't – I mean, Saquon uh, had the – I'm sorry, held them under 300 yards. Held them to 292, held them to 59 plays, um, 4.9 yards per play, held them to, held them to uh, 186 passing yards, mm-hmm. 106 rushing yards. I mean, not bad numbers at all. No. Um, Saquon had to earn it. So, Tone, he had 23 carries for 80 yards. That's 3.5. I'll take that. Yeah, yeah, I'll I'll take that as well. Yeah. Uh, And, and what's what you don't like is Slayton had the 70, 69 yarder, and his numbers look inflated from that three catches, 90 yards, right? Nobody else really did much else, uh, Mm -hmm. for the most part, um, for them. And, you know, Tommy DeVito showed you what he is. Tyrod Taylor, you know, he's a third stringer, he's a backup. Like, it's, Right. That's why I said last week, I'm not worried about the Giants. The Eagles are going to find a way to make the game. That's the problem. Yes, and, the Giants, and, the, the Eagles were like. The Giants didn't do anything. No. Let, 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 let's make this clear, too. I don't want people to get us misconstrued here. The Giants are terrible. They didn't do anything at all to win that game. But the Eagles gave them every opportunity, you know, for, you know, for the Christmas Day miracle. Yes. Gave them every opportunity. So, I mean, do with that what you will. But me. That's a big problem for me. That's a mm-hmm. that's that's a that's a hallmark of concerns. Like it's 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 embedded on them all year long, making these kind of mistakes. I think we lost my guy Rob here. Rob, you there? Let's make sure we got this thing going. All right, but nonetheless, yeah, I think we lost Rob for a second. But um, yeah, Eagles fans. I mean, I I, I look at this. I look at this Eagles team as a team that's way better than what they've shown us. And quite frankly, when I look at the quarter, well, let, let's start on, let's, let's stay on defense. When I look at the linebackers, right? Shaq Leonard had a good game. He played well. Um, Reed Blankenship, you can't over pursue like that. It took him forever to get, it, it took him forever to get out of his back pedal. So there we go. I think we lost Rob. So, we're going to try to keep this thing going, you guys. I appreciate y'all. appreciate you guys for locking in on Sports Take for as long as you guys have. So I look at this team as a team that's better than what they are, but on, but on the defensive side, right, when you look at them from top to bottom from a personnel standpoint, are they as good as we think they are? Are they as good as we expect them to be? No and no. So in the offseason, they're going to have a lot of questions. How, how do they handle the cornerback position, right? How good is Keely Ringo? Um, do they draft the corner in the first round? Um, safety, how good are they are safety? Is Reed Blankenship the long-term answer, right? He's played decent throughout the season, but he's had his, his he's had his his own uh set of issues with health, so on and so forth. The defensive line, not being able to get home, right? One second against the Giants. Is that is, is that is that really it? And there were plenty of moments in that game where I thought to myself, okay, they got they they got DeVito dead to rights, or they got Tyrod Tyra Taylor dead to rights. So when you factor all those things in, how can we take this team seriously in the playoffs? Aside from the logo, aside from the colors, aside from our allegiance, when you're watching the product on the field, 
how can we take this team serious when you're going to have to potentially go on the road for a playoff game? You're going to potentially place uh, or, or face the 49ers or face the Cowboys, right? Um, you may have to face one of these dangerous teams on the back end, like the Lions or the Buccaneers. I'm not saying the Lions or the Buccaneers are as good as the Eagles, but what I am saying is the Eagles haven't shown an ability to consistently put teams away. They allow teams to hang around, and that's not a trait that you want to have going into the playoffs. If you've got a team down 20-3, to three, you should win that game by double digits at the very least. The Cowboys, or, or I'm sorry, the Giants should have never been in this game in any way. Remember, the Giants did nothing to win this game. They were unimpressive, they were uninspiring, and they took advantage of opportunities that the Eagles gave them. Remember that, you guys. These are the opportunities that the Eagles are creating for the opponent. And, they, and they've been doing it for the most part all year, right? Jalen Hurts with 18 turnovers on the season. 18. It's two games left. Will he have 20 turnovers on the season? Help me out, Eagles fans. Help me out. At this rate, Jalen Hurts, has he has 18 turnovers on the season. Will he have 20 by the end of the season? Will he have 20? It's entirely possible. It's entirely possible. A fumble there, a, t a tip ball there, it's entirely possible. So when you factor all those things in, when, when you factor all those things in, we got to look at this team very measured like. We got to look at them as a team who, who may not just who may not be as good as we thought they were. We're gonna have to really, we're gonna have to really evaluate that. Now I'm not telling you guys to enter every game um, not confident, right? Because once the game starts, anything anything can happen. And who knows? But right now, there's 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 a disconnect between what the Philadelphia Eagles are showing us versus what they want to do. There's a disconnect in that locker room. I just have a hard time believing this team, as it's presently built, as they're playing, can go deeper to the playoffs. I think, and I... And let me make this clear, too. I would love to be proven wrong. And I was all in on the Philadelphia Eagles. As a matter of fact, I was actually willing to throw the Philadelphia Eagles some bail even after the uh, the two-game losing streak against the Cowboys and the Niners. I was willing to throw them bail. But when you throw in the Seahawks loss, Rob, yeah. I mean, <clears throat> it's hard – to take them seriously, and then you sh and then you find a way to make things interesting against the Giants. I mean, right now, what, what they've displayed defensively, offensively, over the past four games, has it been inspiring? No, I mean, I, I think that um, just to pick up on your point, I, I had I don't know if I'm the only one. Tell me if you did or people in the chat as well. Um, if you had visions of Drew Locke marching them down the field, I had visions of Tyrod Taylor potentially taking them down for, for a game winner yesterday. And it, it's, it was stuck in my head. Um, yeah. I mean, look, you know, defensively, there's a couple things here, Tone. I, I think that um, you could certainly be encouraged by Shaq Leonard. Seven tackles, a sack, two tackles for a loss. They probably are getting Avante Maddox back this week. It looks like, Ringo can play. You're going to get Slay back at some point. Maybe you can really minimize Bradbury. Maybe, uh, you know, I don't. When know you say minimize, really, what do you mean? Um, hide him a little bit more. I, I think he'll still start. He's making too much money not to start. He's too prideful. Right. Um, right. But maybe you cannot have him on the field in massive situations. I don't know. I don't know that they're ready to trust uh, Ringo to that extent. But if you get Maddox back, I think it'll settle things down a little bit back there um, in the secondary. Possible. Problem you have is that you know the safety, there's safety issues um, with them in general. But Jack Leonard played well. I'm still frustrated in general, even though I thought Reddick had a good game, four QB hits and a, a tackle for a loss. You can't just have one sack. You can't have one sack against that Giants team. Um, you know, it, it, that's something that has to get, they have to get better at, but yeah, I agree with you. Like, I think in general, um, th there has to be that ability to be finishers too. And like, 
the, the Giants shouldn't have gotten down the field on you like that. It should have just been a three and out, put them away and run it, to, you know, to, to run the clock out like you were able to do a lot of times last year and a couple times earlier this season. Mm-hmm. And it's not there. And and look, I think we have every right to be sort of, even though they're they're they've won a ton of games this year. I think we have every right to be critical of the way it looks, even with a win. That's what we are. That's what we do. We're not just willing to to be sheep and just say, "Hey, they won." You know, you got to take a d- deeper dive into this thing it's, again, especially this time of year. Yeah, especially when you're looking at other teams like the Ravens, who are playing spectacular right now. Um, despite the ugly loss, 49ers are still a team that you have to respect um cowboys same thing lions same thing we talked about the rams they're coming on the buccaneers they're coming on as well i mean those teams you might have to run up against one of them in the play one or two of them in the playoffs like you, you it, it all has to be taken in consideration so yep you know when, when, I, when i look at it from that perspective i don't think the philadelphia eagles i don't think they're relatively safe against anybody it, it, any any ma- any matchup they get in the playoffs, that team can beat them. I believe that. Yeah, I, I would I would tend to agree with that. I don't, I don't think they're a lock against anybody. I, I think um, you know the the other thing I see somebody in the chat saying he's making too much money not to start. It's that type of pathetic thinking that has us in this position. Play the best players. Mm-hmm. What I think you have to be able to understand is um, what I'm telling you. I think they may do versus what I would do are two different things. You have to be able to draw that distinction and understand nuance. So what I'm saying is Rob, that the right Rob, that kind of thing is too complex. Yeah, how dare we? But Come no, on, I think I think Bradbury's an accident waiting to happen. I would love to see him not get as many opportunities. But if I'm if you're asking me what I think they'll do, I think they'll keep starting Bradbury. That's what I think. But um no you're right, Tone. So if you look at the if you look at the just look at the NFC East right now and let's go through and we're going to do this a little bit more in depth in a minute but if you look at the teams that, that would be in right now okay mm-hmm. so who would be in right now right now the one seed would be the Niners the two seed would be the Eagles the three seed would be the the, the Detroit Lions four seed would be Tampa who Tampa starting to play pretty decent by the way mm-hmm. um, Dallas is five the Rams are six and Seattle seven okay that's where your cutoff is so San Fran gets the bye. If things end it right now, the Eagles would get Seattle at home. I, I I feel like the Eagles would beat them at home. But if you're telling me lock it in automatic, you don't have to sweat this thing. Like I felt like last year when the Eagles played the Giants in the first mm-hmm. round, I don't feel the same way. I do think the Eagles would win that game, but I don't. But but if you look at the rest of those teams, and again, this is a team that beat them. In fairness, they beat them earlier in the year. Mm-hmm. Um, Los Angeles is hot as hell right now. Um, Dallas, a lot of it depends on where you get them, but if you get them at home, you feel better, but I don't feel like that's a lock. I would feel good against the Eagles versus Tampa. Uh, Detroit to me is a, that could go a lot of different ways, you know, and then there's San Fran who I think they would lose to. Like if you're just asking me right now. So to your point, uh, there isn't any, anyone I go in saying, man, look at the way they've struggled against bad teams. I don't know how you would feel that. Yeah, yeah. So you know, I'm, again, I'm 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 looking at this team as looking at them as a team who has to prove it every single right. week. Like, can you imagine them going into the first round wild card weekend playing playing Seattle and losing that game? Can you imagine that? Uh, no, that would that, that would really it, that would be hideous, and, and it would not go over well. And I think. There would be some type of change. What I mean by that is I don't think they would fire Nick Sirianni, uh, but I think there would be some changes made internally uh, if something like that happened because, you know, uh, and I appreciate this to a degree. There isn't a ton of patience in that front office. There is and there isn't. Like, in other words, they're – I'll give them credit. They rewarded Michael Clay with an extension, and he has Mm -hmm. rewarded them with a very good special teams season good on the Eagles for doing that for having for seeing what he was um but we've already seen them pull the plug on Sean to Sean Desai we see we saw them move on from Doug Peterson what three years after he won a Super Bowl so nothing is guaranteed and nothing is forever so if this exactly. is a collapse situation and you lose at home in, in in you know wild card round to Seattle heads are gonna roll man make no mistake Heads will roll. 
Right. And I'm looking at it. I'm looking at it like it's all possible. It's all on the table. It's the least amount of confidence I had in this team over the past two years because of how they've handled themselves and because of the internal the internal issues with the coaching staff and um, the lack of identity on offense. I think, OK, it's, 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 it's so funny on, on, on the defensive side. Right. They're going to be getting Maddox back before the playoffs. They're going to get Zach Cunningham back in time for the playoffs. What do you think is the the recipe for this defense in the playoffs? And I, I obviously it's matchups, obviously it's matchup specific. But what do you think? What do you think this defense needs to happen? What do they need to happen on uh, on, oh, on the defense side? You know, for, for them to be successful. Sack success. the quarterback. You got to sack okay. the quarterback. All right, number one, you're built to sack the quarterback. You put all your money into sacking the quarterback. You got to sack the quarterback. That's the first thing. The second thing okay. is they got to be a little bit better at taking the ball away. I, I mean, I don't expect them to all of a sudden become good, so I'm setting the bar really low, but occasionally get a freaking pick. They got one last night on the last play of the game. That's fine. I'm talking about you know something that, that impacts the game earlier. I want to okay. see that. Um, I want to see them get off the field on third down. Let me let me look at third downs last night. Uh, in fact, I, it, that's you know that's something I should have looked at last night. Um, the Giants yeah, were, were four they? for fourteen on third down. Okay, so I mean that's, that's, it's that's a good number. That's good. That is good. Um, I'm, I'm encouraged to hear that. Giants four for fourteen. Yeah, so that's good. Um, that's so I would say those three things. Tone get to the quarterback. Occasionally mm. force something where you give your offense a short field, uh, mm. where they don't have to go seventy five yards every single time. And then get off the field on third down. Those three. If, that's, if you get those three at a at a serviceable level, the offense should be able to do enough to get you wins. I believe. I that. agree. And, and and that's why the Cubby pump return was so huge, right? It yeah. gave them the spark they needed. Um, it was the first time in a while where we saw some complimentary football. Right. They they're going to need that. They're going to need for this for this Philadelphia Eagles team to go to distance more than ever. They're going to need all three phases. Excuse me. They're going to need all three phases working together. Special teams is going to have to find a way to create short fields for this mm -hmm. offense. Defense has to find a way to not only get up the field on third down, but when possible, cause a freaking turnover or two. Make a play. Yes. And then offense – you have to sustain drives to keep your defense off the field because that's your weakness. Yes. If you can find a way to hide your weakness by keeping them off the field long enough, then you can win games. So it, I think that's what, that's how they need to carve out their identity instead of mm -hmm. believing they are what they aren't. You have to find a way to keep that defense off the field for as long as humanly possible if you mm -hmm. want to have any chance of making a deep playoff run. The defense is not going to win games for you. We, mm -hmm. We're, we're going to make that abundantly clear at this point. We're never we're never going to set ourselves up for that kind of failure, Eagles fans. The defense, I'm saying this, to, I'm saying this, and I'm and I, I'm sticking by this. The defense is not going to be the one to win you a game. They're not. If no, it happens, it's going to be the offense. Yeah. If, if, if now if it happens, oh wow, hey man, that's a plus cherry on top. But am I going into games at any point for the remainder of the season and playoffs, counting on this defense to be the reason why they win? Hell no. So I think it's going to be imperative for all three of those phases to work together so the defense can be so the defense can be hidden as much as possible. They're not going to be the reason you win, but oh, they no. can be but they could be every reason why you lose. Yeah, I think that's well said. I, and I think that's a realistic way to look at it. Would, would you want the defense to look like the Ravens? Yeah, that's not who they are this year. So, and was, even in the way they looked last year. It's just not who they are. So they're not built that way. But give your offense a fighting chance. You know, give, give your offense shorter fields, uh, those kind of things. Just do that. If you're able to do those kind of things, I do think the offense is capable. I Look, Tone, they may fool us, man. We may get to the postseason and all of a sudden there's some kind of different, you know, just focus or dial in. It, it's happened before. It's possible. Do I think it's realistic? Probably yeah. not I, to expect yeah. it to happen after we haven't seen it all year. Yep, possible, um, yes. Probable, probably not. Yeah, there's the, the P words <laughs> are very different uh, in, in that case. But yeah. um, what I'm going to glean out of Sunday, Monday, it doesn't not see, doesn't this feel like a Monday, by the way? It feels, it feels off. I was, Christmas, I was, Christmas I was so on a Monday screwed up yesterday. I, I, yesterday felt like a Sunday to me. 
right? And Chris, then, cr- yes, yes. Oh, yes, man. I, anyway. I'm with you on that, man. Like, yeah. Christmas on a Christmas on a Monday is like the weirdest thing on planet Earth. Yeah. Like, I caught myself like th- three or four times yesterday, and a bunch of times today. Like, dude, it's Tuesday. Like, lock it in here, you know. But anyway, um, but what I was saying, you know, re- that I'm that I'm going to take out of this thing. Shaq Leonard looks like he's he's something. Um, you're getting Avante Maddox back. Ringo looks like he's starting to figure it out. And, you know, beyond that, I still believe that there's more to be gotten from Josh Sweat. I still believe there's more to be gotten from the interior guys, you know, right. the young kids, Jordan Davis and Carter. And, you know, I, I, I don't know, frankly, how much more there is to tap into with BG at, at this juncture in his career. I, I hope he's... He's all of a sudden, man, it's like, you know, it's playoff time now. I got, I don't have to hold back anything. There's no preserving. Let's go. And then maybe in that case, we're going to see a different looking brand again because he is a clutch player too. He's been through these battles for a hundred years. So maybe that looks a little bit different. So there's some of the things that I'm looking for. You, you, you broke down and we broke down like three things that we could really look for for the defense to do. These are individuals that I'm looking at that could really step up for this team come this time of year. Yeah, you know, Jordan Davis says something really interesting. He says, uh, I know he said, I know we're shutting a lot of people out at home, but we <laughs> <laughs> he said he said, I know we're shutting people out at home. We needed it bad. I can't emphasize enough how how much we needed a W. Yeah. That's a person that's a person that gets it. That's a person that understands where this team is right now. Mm-hmm. He he he's he has self awareness, right? He knows that this thing has been r- riding on. The, yeah. the most unreliable wills that you can think about, <laughs> but they, he and he knows how bad they needed that win to you know yeah. to kind of shift just the dynamic, shift the energy, right? It's yeah, you to- did. I mean, you did stem the tide. Like the bleeding was stopped, and everybody can take a deep breath. Like that's the good thing. Is as ugly as it was, you know, and it, it's not panic city. I, it's concern, I, I, and there's a difference between the, the P and the C there. Yeah, I don't want to say the bleeding has stopped. I'd much rather say they finally put pressure on the damn thing. Okay. That's fair. They, uh, that's they, right. they, yeah, the they, cut they, isn't healed. It's not yeah. healed, but you've get, at least it's not dripping down your arm at this point. They finally put pressure on it. Yeah. They're on their way to the hospital. <laughs> Urgent Can, care. They're on their way. Will they make it in time? <laughs> yeah. Can we save this victim? No. Uh, We're going to Co- find out, you guys. Coach Marcus, I, I agree and I disagree. I agree, Fletch. Fletch has been awesome all year. I, awesome. I want him back. I absolutely want him back. And I love BG. Uh, so I'm not crushing the guy. I'm just saying I would have liked a little bit more. And I know it's difficult with him because he doesn't get the reps. And I, I can appreciate that. That's what sort of what I meant by that was maybe they'll, they'll take all the harnesses off and, and, and let him get you know some more snaps here in the playoffs and we'll see more from him. So I will, I, I will certainly get BG. He, he has been too great a player for this organization for me not to give him a little leeway uh, for sure. So I'm yeah. hoping, again, hoping that yeah. that's the case. And, and, and there are also there are also teams that maybe they're having the, a rough go of it in the season, but they're just there are teams who just operate well in the playoffs, like the Chiefs. I know they're struggling right now, but when it gets don't to the playoffs, count them out. Yep. Don't count them out. Yep. Don't count them out at all. Um, I agree. And hopefully, and then maybe we should give the Eagles some of that benefit and, of the doubt. And maybe. that's exactly where I'm going with it. Hopefully, yeah. the Philadelphia Eagles can provide us um, with enough, um, you know. Can can provide enough to where they are that kind of team in the playoffs as well. Yeah, things are kind of been a struggle, but but now that they're in, okay, mm-hmm. there it, it's a different gear, it's a different way that we approach preparation, and hopefully, um, that can lead to Eagles being lead to the Eagles being more successful. I can fair, I, I can buy that. I can totally buy that. All right, um, we'll come back. We'll look at a couple other things. Um, you know, there are guys that are unhappy. AJ Brown, Devonte. Some of the other things that need to be cleaned up a little bit here. And we'll give some props out too uh to some guys who are unsung. You know, I, I again uh, I give I'm giving special teams love uh because I thought between Covey, Braden Mann, Elliot, uh, other than the the botch on the kickoff, I, I think special teams has been a real br- uh, bright spot the entire year for this team. So uh we'll hit it, we'll come back, we'll dive further in as we'll do a full blown NFL segment too, uh, as we always do coming up in a little bit. I want to tell you about pro action restoration. In fact, my, my guy Tony is here right now painting the uh painting the basement. That's why I got the uh you know the tree set up for you right there, showing off the tree. 
Um, uh, but yeah, it's, I had, as you guys know, uh, from listening to the show, had some flooding in the house, had all kinds of, uh, issues and pro action restoration was absolutely incredible. So if you go through the pain, the inconvenience of water, fire, smoke, mold damage to your property, uh, your home, <clears throat> excuse me, a business that you may own, uh, they are on call 24 hours, seven days a week to assist. Pro action restoration is also licensed, bonded, fully insured, Serving the tri-state area for more than two decades, ProAction will work in conjunction with your insurance company. So it could be any of these and then some. If you're not sure, reach out. But water, fire, smoke damage, mold remediation, they can handle it. Uh, but if you're not sure about something, give them a call. 610-623-3760. 610-623-3760. Or online at ProActionRestoration.com. That's ProActionRestoration.com. Go to get your game on. Go for the beers, go for the cheers, go for the hit and the hits, go for the stakes and the stakes, go to get your parlay on, go to get your party on, go for the scene, go for the screens, go for the gallery, go for the win, go to ocean, visit theoceanac.com to plan your visit. At Pond Lee Hockey, we've recovered billions of dollars for our clients, and we're confident we can do the same for you. With over 250 years of combined courtroom experience, we've helped over 100,000 injured clients obtain some of the largest settlements in Pennsylvania. One conversation is all it takes to help you and your family get back on track. If you've been injured in an accident, give Pond Lee Hockey a call. Field of life. First Trust Bank is there for you. Because Philadelphia dreams deserve a Philadelphia bank. Underdog Fantasy has a way for you to play alongside your favorite football team all season long with their Fantasy Pick'em game. You pick between two to five players, select whether they'll go higher or lower on one of their stats, then do what you usually do on a Sunday. Watch the games. You can win up to 20 times your money in a single game by going five for five. It's a fantasy game. And the sports betting show wants you to get involved. Go to underdogfantasy.com. When you sign up, use the promo code WIN, and Underdog will double your first deposit up to $100. That's underdogfantasy.com. Use the promo code WIN. Do you stream on a Roku, Fire Stick, Google TV, or Apple TV? Now you can watch 6ABC 24-7 with the 6ABC Philadelphia streaming app. For the big story on Action News. Search 6ABC <laughs> Philadelphia and start streaming today. E-A-G-L-E-S. Eagles. Stone, I'm Rob. We are Sports Take. Appreciate you hanging with us on this December 26th. All right, Tone. So um, a couple things that, that need to be cleaned up, right? Um, there's no reason Jalen Carter can't get off the field fast enough um, where you get a 12-man penalty, 12-man penalty on that play. I, I Again, I, th- I view a lot of these things that happened last night as learning lessons. Like, I, I, I guarantee you he caught an earful from – you know, his defense, you know, Tracy Rocker, or whomever, who is the defensive line coach. I don't think that'll happen again. Um, I don't think we'll see Olamide, Olamide Zacchaeus banging to Boston Scott where he fumbles 
At least I'm hoping. Yeah, that was strange. That was so strange, man. Just the optics looked like something out of a cartoon. I mean, he was literally going the other way into him as as he came out. But I don't think we'll see yeah. that. In slow motion, you realize that oh, like Zacchaeus actually got pushed into him. Yes, but the fact that his so, back was to the guy pushing him and and going almost like he's making a tackle into Scott was so weird. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It looked so. It looked. It looked bad. It looked bad, man. It, it just wasn't a good look. Yeah. So uh, again, do I think Jalen Hurts, who is, who has an extremely high football IQ, is going to try and stay in bounds there where he had no prayer of busting that thing in for a TD? No, I think he'll duck out of bounds. So I think there are things that happened last night that are correctable. I honestly believe correctable. I'm not just trying to look at this through you know green colored glasses. I, I think you know Dallas Goddard slipped. You know, here, here's what I'll say about the Dallas Goddard slip thing. That's bad luck, but the play before that probably should have been a pick. So Jalen may have gotten fortunate on the play before that, and that's what he's got to clean up. He's still a little click careless with, with, with the ball for my taste, Tone, in general. And it's been a pro- he's got 18 on the season. Way too many. Way too many as a team. Um, so there are things that have to be fixed, and there are things that I think happen that fall under the category of some be- some unluckiness. I guess would be a better, you know, better word in some ways. Yeah, at, at this point, he's going to have more turnovers and games played. Yes, not a place, not not a place you want to be in. Awful, it's um, an awful place to be. Yeah, and also, if you think about it, he had a couple passes get bad and tipped up, and the, uh-huh. the, that's kind of been that's kind of been his mo all year, man. And you know, when you're when you're an, a six feet, six foot one quarterback with cleats on. You know, you got to try a little harder to get that ball over the line of scrimmage. A lot of those guys are 6'4", 6'5", wingspan, like 6'9", 6'10". These guys long arms, long bodies. And, you know, you got you, you got to do a better job. Of find, you got to do a better job of trying to find a way to get the ball over the line of scrimmage. Too often, his balls get batted down or tipped up and they, and they lead the picks. That's yeah. kind of been something that's plagued him all year. So I think it's a, a throwing lanes he needs to comprehend. Occasionally, you know, you'll see – used to see guys like – breeze or, or whatever they'll, they'll give you a three quarters look sometimes mm-hmm. you know with the throw where you're not straight over the top you know I, I you know again is this some of the things he can learn as he goes sure I'd have to go back and look and see what some of the shorter guys were doing in their third year as a starter or whatever fourth year you know what I'm saying like that that's mm-hmm. I'd have to look at that but that's something that he you're right there it's happened too often this year and it, it you know it's funny after he had such a good year last year we never brought up his size anymore but this year, you're noticing it a little bit more uh, than you did last year, for sure. Yeah, be, be because, you know, Drew Brees had a similar issue. Yes. Right? So, if you notice in his throw motion, he always ended up on his tippy toes when he threw the ball. Somehow, yeah. some way. He always ended up on his tippy toes. Um, I think that, I think that could be something Jalen Hurts may have to revisit, you know, in the lab, right? How can he avoid those, those batted down passes at the line of scrimmage? What can he do? Differently, yeah. and maybe maybe there's not so much he could. Maybe there's only so much he can do because of his his stature, right? Mm-hmm. But but overall, though, um, eighteen turnovers on the season, unacceptable. I, I I don't think any of us saw that coming. No, I didn't. I certainly didn't. He was very good at taking care of the football last year. They were a very good team at taking care of the football last year, and they have not been a good. It's it certainly he leads the charge, right? But there have mm-hmm. been too many others who who have not been. Uh, good with the ball. And in turn, they don't take, we talked about this, they don't take the ball away. Um, and that's been a major problem. I mean, last night got them over, well, that was their seventh interception, which is one more than CJ GJ had all of last year by himself. So that's a problem when you've now played 15 games and you have one more interception as a team than CJ GJ had by himself last year. That's a mm-hmm. major problem. Um, they don't strip the but you watch how other teams are masters at at that punch play. You won't see that from the Eagles. You know, you, and some of this is the secondary is just not that good. So they're not getting good mm-hmm. read on balls. They're chasing a lot of times instead of anticipating. That's right. why they get the picks. But you just don't see it in general. I mean, and the other thing you got last year was and, and and this is where I'll maybe get on Reddick a little bit. Reddick was great with the forced fumbles for the strip backs. Yes, he doesn't have any. Off the top of my head, I'm going to say five last year. I, I didn't yeah, know. yeah, he, he led the league in forced fumbles last year. That hasn't been there. That aspect hasn't been there for him this year. He's again, he's not the only one. Josh Sweat has been far too MIA for a long time. 
you know, for, for me, I, 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 they need more. I expect it more out of them, but that team needs way more out of him uh, than he's given them this year. So he's got to be better um, than he's been this season. So some of this stuff, again, I don't think some of this is, is end of the world stuff. And we've been seeing it all year. Last night, there was some strange stuff that went down. That's all. Yeah. Yeah. So I want to, uh, I want to throw something at you, right? Please. It says here, um, Jeff Kerr put this stat up about 19 minutes ago. Um, shows the uh, where is it? Shows the rushing numbers on first down in the last two games. Okay. DeAndre Swift, 24 carries, 130 yards, 5.4 yards per carry. Jalen Hurts, five carries, 39 yards. And Kenny Gainwell, seven carries, 36 yards, 5.1 yards per carry. And this is the rushing numbers on first down first in the last down. two games. Okay. So uh, obviously, obviously Swift had obviously Swift leads them with twenty four carries. Um, this is proof that Swift needs to be getting the ball more. Agreed. You know, um, he had, I mean he he had twenty touches yesterday. But think, but think about that. He had twenty touches yesterday. Twenty four carries on first down over the last two games. I think Swift is. I, I think Swift needs to be a huge part of what they do going into the playoffs. What do you think? Uh, I agree. Uh, you know, it, it's been an issue of mine all season uh, with them. I And I know, you, you know, there are certain people who cover the team who want to push back and tell you this is a passing league and this and that. My point isn't that you get to run the ball 50 times in a game. I do think it's a passing league. But to not utilize a weapon of yours, and I think Swift is a real weapon, whether that's running it or throwing mm-hmm. it to him, is a problem. Like they did a great job yesterday of giving Swift touches and you see what he does when he gets touches. He is really effective for you. But there were there were too many games during that stretch where I just didn't think that they were getting the ball to him enough either handing it off or throwing it to him in space. So I love it. I'm glad to hear those numbers. I hope the Eagles, you know, are obviously they know every trend that there is, but I hope that they continue to see that and continue to utilize it because the guy's too good not to get the ball to. Sorry. He's just he's a really good player. Yeah, he is. Yeah, he's a um he's a solid player for sure. He's talented enough where you have to respect him when the ball's in his hands. Um he can like we saw yesterday, he could turn what a two, three yard loss into a 15, 20 yard gain. So um I think Swift is probably the unsung hero of this offense. He needs to get more touches. And then Dallas Goddard. I think I think they entered that game last night, honestly, with the with a mindset of okay, we're gonna get Swift and Goddard the ball early. And then uh, AJ and Smitty, um, you guys take over in our you guys take over in our high leverage situations in the second half, so on and so forth. Um, but I think I think what we saw yesterday uh, is a sign in the in, in in the right direction in terms of just just taking what they give you mm-hmm. and operating within those confines, and you can do and you can get a lot done, and then eventually some big plays can leak out over the top or whatever may happen. Just trust your personnel to take what they give you, and then eventually the big, the big plays will come. Right. Agreed. I, I don't think that – yeah, the, the, I appreciate aggression. I do. I appreciate the ability to pop off a 70-yarder a and what that can do to an opposing team. But I also think that the Eagles have gone a little overboard with that, trying to force-feed things at times. And when you have the ability – you have the ability to small ball teams sometimes. They can do that. They can run it with Swift. They can dump it off the game well. They can find Dallas Goddard. We saw it last night. They can do that kind of thing. It's there. You don't have to go deep all the time. You don't always have to be forcing things. And I'm hopeful that last night was a sign that they're kind of coming off of that just oh, deep, 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 deep all the time. That's what I hope. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's the best you can hope for. Remember, I said to you, this, these, this next stretch of games, Giants, Cardinals, Giants, it's not going to move the needle for either of us in terms of gauging them on the competition, right? right? That's not going to move the needle in that regard. But mm-hmm. what they can hope for, can you establish balance or continuity or some kind of identity over these next three weeks? Something yep. that you can take into the playoffs foundationally and have confidence in. Um, did they do that unequivocally yesterday? No, but I believe it was a step to see that the offense was patient enough against an inferior opponent because typically in those kind of games, you can go in and just think, oh, we're going to just throw the ball at these guys and just kill them in the air. 
they didn't take the bait and they were for the most part patient with what the Giants gave them and they ended up putting up 33 points by accident. So yeah, I mean, I, I let me put it to you this way. The players themselves recognize that they're not where they want to be. Like a, a direct quote last night from Devontae Smith. We have 11 wins, but we're not playing good football right now. As an offense, we're not where we want to be. It needs to be better from what I want to do. Whatever everybody else in here wants to do, where we want to be. And we're nowhere near that. So, no, I'm not happy. Okay, that's that's the direct quote. This isn't Tone and I. That's direct quote from an Eagles player. Okay, uh, Jalen Hurts. I think we're hungry. I think we're motivated, eager. It's just a matter of being together and committing ourselves to that excellence and chasing that. And that's, that's being asked, you know, kind of where things are offensively. Um, you know, and then Smith went on to say, you don't expect to have to talk and then everything is going to be clean. No, you're still going to have problems and things like that, but it's going in the right direction and we need to get going in the right direction. So, I mean, the players themselves see it. That to me is an encouraging sign. Like there, mm-hmm. nobody in that locker room is kidding themselves that everything's hey, fine. Thank here. God, because Lord knows if, if you ask certain fans, man, they think the Eagles, they think they shit don't stink. <laughs> it's like, no. Yeah. It, and it, again, they, they see it. They feel it. They're in there. They know. They know for a fact this thing is, they think they know this thing can fall off the rails rather easily. They know. I always, Tony, I always try to approach it like, all right, first off, what's my gut saying? And my gut is saying after that game was over, like, I'm not satisfied with this. They won. Yes. The objective was met ultimately, but they're not going to be playing the Giants in the playoffs. They're playing better teams. Exactly. exactly. So that's why I always try to look at it with the, with the one eye. There, there's one eye here, and then there's one eye going here. So your eye here is, yes, they won. They went to 11-4. and four. They got help. You know, all of a sudden, this thing's not out of the question. They get right. a bye it, week. Right. It wasn't a bad week overall. No. It wasn't a bad it, week because Bill, um, because um, Cowboys lost, Niners lost, you won. Right. You had a you had a good week from that regard. It's true. But here here's the J Lo butt in this thing. If you don't take care of your own business, man, it won't matter. <laughs> we can look around all we want. You know what I mean? Y'all, y'all at, heard that, can, right? We could we can look into the neighbor's house. And we can look around with the telescope and the binoculars. And say, oh, this is this is great. But if our house isn't good, it doesn't matter. Hey, hey, listen, man, that was a, <laughs> that was a hell of a metaphor. I had to get it I'll in. I'll tell there, you man. that. Look, I had to get it in there. Yeah, that's the only metaphor. That's the kind of metaphor you make when your wife's not home. <laughs> <laughs> correct. You are correct, sir. Yes, uh, but no, it's true though, man. I mean, it's just like you, for for me again. Still two weeks to fine tune things. That's the way I view it. Like you're not going in for an overhaul. You're going in to, to tweak some things here and there, fix some things here and there. And then hopefully the car is ready to roll two weeks mm-hmm. when it gets real. That's it. I mean, that's the only other way I can look at this thing realistically with this team. Yeah. Yeah. You know, like while we're at it, as a matter of fact, again, <clears throat> playoff picture 49ers are, are the number one seed. Right, Eagles are the two, Lions are the three, Buccaneers the four, Cowboys the five, Rams six, Seahawks seven. So, um, the Cowboys final two game stretch, Lions Commanders, the 49ers, their uh, final two uh, game command, stretch, uh, Commanders, uh, Commanders Rams. Rams at the Commanders Rams home. So. We're going to be rooting for the Commanders a lot over these next couple of weeks. I can yes. tell you that. We're yep. going to be rooting for the Commanders one week, and we're going to be rooting for the uh, Cowboys another week because we we want the Cowboys to beat the Lions, but we don't want them to beat the Commanders. Um, and the 49ers, you know, we we want the Commanders to beat them, and we want the Lions to somehow find a find a way to beat. I mean, I want the Rams to find a way to beat them. So look, all I that wish, stuff. Is I wish that unlikely. game was in L.A. I wish that that last game was in yeah, L.A. Not, yeah, yeah, me friend. too. Me too. Um, but let's be honest. Uh, a LA game for the Rams is not even a home game, so it doesn't even matter. The mm-hmm. Rams play. The Rams play on the road every week. Yep. Um. Yeah, so that's man, true. That's a good can point. The, can the Rams push the Niners? Oh man, who knows? Who knows? But I think they be- can. I do. Like I think they can push them. Uh, you know, I'm I'm curious. That, first of all, the Niners have a couple of injuries, right? So Purdy got another stinger. It's a second straight week he got a stinger. Um. Is it a thrown so shoulder? Yeah. So he left the game. And then 
Trent Williams, and we know like Trent losing Trent Williams for them is like the Eagles losing Lane Johnson. Mm-hmm. It's a huge deal. So he's dealing with a groin injury right now. So that that's two big ones to keep your eye on, you know, for them going forward here, what this looks like. I also wonder, like Purdy hasn't had that kind of game. I don't recall, certainly this year, uh, where he looked that bad. The closest game he's had to that, I believe, was the Vikings game. That was the closest. Yeah, and he wasn't great in Cleveland. You remember that one? He wasn't great there either. Because he threw two interceptions against the Vikings. Um, against Cleveland, he threw an interception. Yeah. Uh, so in the Bengals, I believe, he threw two interceptions. So That was um, during that stretch. Yeah, that stretch where they were struggling. Yeah. Right, right. So in that Browns-Vikings-Bengals stretch, he threw five interceptions in that stretch. He threw four interceptions just last night. Yeah. So how, my question is just, you know, he's still a young quarterback. I, you know, I get it. He played a lot of college football, but how does he respond to that? It, and and how's the shoulder? Um, Trent Williams injury could, could be a big deal. Um, you yeah, know, the Cowboys. Right. And, know, and knowing them, could they, could, look, here's the thing too, real quick before you go. Yeah. Are the Niners liable to, are, are they, are they liable to sit, Trent Williams against the commanders so he can rest up. Right. It's possible. It's a good question. Yeah. I don't know. I don't, I mean, uh, yeah, we'll see. Right. Um, We'll see. I think that um, the other thing is how are the Cowboys at all shook? I know it was two on the road. It wasn't at home and they're great at home. The seven and oh, they should, they they should be though. They should be nervous because they're going to have to. Yeah. They're going to have to play at, at this rate. They're going to have to play the entire playoffs on the road at this rate. They should be nervous. They, they mm-hmm. can't win. The, the, there are literally two different teams at home versus on the road. Yeah, They should be nervous. I mean, we're no, as Eagles fans, we're nervous for our own separate reasons. But for their problems, for their issues, they should be petrified. Yeah. If you ask me. Because, again, it's not like, it's not like you know, you just lose these close games. And, and granted, that was a close game they lost. But – for the most part, you're like you're not even the same team. You, you know, you're nowhere near close to who you are or who, or who you market yourself to be. They're, they're they're Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde when it comes to home and road games. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they are. Uh, and, and again, that Detroit game is home. Um, but you know, it, it'll be. They're going to drop forty on Detroit. They're going to drop forty on. You think so? It, yeah. Yeah. I, I, that I, helps I, the I, Eagles. Think, it helps the Eagles. Yeah. I think Cowboys beat Detroit, and I know that we still got some time left before we can have to make predictions. But no, but Cowboys, I think that's. Yeah, they're going to beat them 40 to like 28, 40, 30. Watch. Good. It's actually good in this case. I would never, ever say that normally, Tone, but this is what mm-hmm. you need. If you if the Dallas wins and the Eagles win out, you're getting two seed, basically. So uh, at worst, you could still even maybe get a one. So that's a huge deal um, in that game. It's going to be hard for all of us to have to do it. But, you know, it, it, it's, you know. It's just a fact. That's how the that's how your rooting interest has to be in this game. The good thing is exactly. the way this the the um the schedule upcoming this week. So this is there's no Monday night game um this upcoming week. So the the week 17, and I can't believe we're in week 17, but the week 17 schedule, and I believe this is the last Thursday night game, too. Uh Jets Browns, but the Saturday game, there's only one Saturday, and it's Saturday night, and that's the Lions and the Cowboys. So, you know, you'll be able to just kind of lock in on that one. Um, and, of course, we have the rare Eagles 1 o'clock game coming up this week, too. Uh, but you'll be you'll be all over that game. You'll be all over the 49ers commanders. You know, obviously, that's going to be a big one uh, as well. Um, but they're, they're the, you know, the three teams you're looking for are the Lions, the Cowboys, and the 49ers right now. That's it. A hey, question. Yeah. If Dallas loses to Detroit and the Eagles win – on Sunday, doesn't that lock up the NFC East? Yes, yes. I would like to. I would like to think that. I mean, that's 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 pretty accurate, right? That sounds right. Let me uh, let me see. Pull up because right now, right now, Eagles are eleven and four. Cowboys are ten and five. If the Cowboys lose, that would make them ten and six. Eagles yeah. win, it puts them at twelve and four, leaving only one game left. If the right. Eagles even lose, that would put, if, the, if, the, if the Eagles lose the final game, that would put them at twelve and five. And the Cowboys win their final game, that'll yeah. put them at eleven and five. 
That's right. I'm sorry. Uh, did I put them at um six? Eleven. Uh, uh, eleven and six. Eleven, 11 and six. six. Yep. So, yeah, you're yeah, right. Twelve and five. Yeah. So, so if, if the Cowboys mm-hmm. lose um against the Lions, the Eagles win. They win the division. But yeah. Lions might take that number two seat as well. That's correct. So yeah, you got Lions pick the because of the yeah. two teams that they're playing to close it out. So yeah, the the mm-hmm. scenario for the one seed is Eagles win out, Niners lose either of their last two, Dallas beats Detroit. If that happens, the Eagles get the one seed. Mm-hmm. Win out, one loss by 49ers, Dallas beats Detroit. They're in. They're the one seed. Hmm. So it, it it could it could happen this weekend. It could. Eagles win. Uh, actually, it can't happen this week because the Eagles have to win both of their games. Never mind. Uh, but you could be on in really good shape going into that Giants game if, if some of the other scenarios play out. But if I'm being real here, unless the Niners are really banged up and guys are unable to go after that beatdown, mm-hmm. do we see the 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 uh, 49ers losing to Washington? I don't. No, I don't either. Washington has packed those bags, man. That thing is over. Giants will give you a little bit of fight as bad as they are. I'll give him props. Washington's just terrible on so many levels. Um, I don't, th- yeah, I wonder. Let me, let's bring this up while we're talking about it. Do you think that there's so much stink on the way that this Washington season is ending that it hurts the enemy at all? Or, or do you think they're bright enough there to look at it and say, mm. you know, he, he came into the middle of a mess? That's how, a do, how do you think they, they view that? That's a good question. Uh, I can't blame Bianca for the way this team has been over the past several years. I mean, he walked no, no, into I, I, yeah. I don't mean years so. past. I mean, I'm uh, just like the, the way this year is kind of plummeting. Like they have dropped six straight. Hmm. Um, yeah, they were competitive against the Jets, but whatever. I mean, they've lost six straight. Yeah, you're right. Uh, they're and probably they gonna lose really- eight, by the way, Tone, because they have San Fran and Dallas to close it out. They, they may not win a game. They may lose their last eight games of the season. And they haven't really been competitive. No. So, yeah, man, um, this this could be a situation where they clean house. But the one thing uh, on the enemy side for this season is how he's rebuilt Sam Howell. Uh, Sam Howell right now, if I'm not mistaken, I think he's top five in passing yards in the league. Um, So that's pretty – actually, no, he's not top five anymore. I take that back. Um. Wow, his numbers are actually um, taking, a, a step, taking a step back. Yeah. So he was on pace for throwing for like forty five hundred yards. Yep. Now he's only he's only thrown for thirty six hundred on the season. He's on pace to throw for forty one hundred. Mm-hmm. So we'll see how that pans out. We'll see what happens in the past couple in the next couple games. But he's kind of come back down to earth. But I think I think overall, Bianchi's done a pretty decent job trying to, you know maximize this kid's skill set but he's he, he he's come back down to earth over the past several weeks and you know it was it was only a matter of time he's been a turnover machine mm-hmm. as of late so who knows you you may be on something maybe, maybe maybe that whole team just gets cleaned out yeah i don't know I, and you know what maybe if he has opportunities to go else maybe he wants to get out of there too be enemy you know we're assuming he wants to stay i don't know who knows that's a good that's, that's a good point we're assuming he wants to be that head coach there we're assuming yeah. that because think about it, and we we you, we we th- we went through all these scenarios last week. But there's legitimate chance that you could have. And by the way, the Jets announced that Sala is going to be back, so take them out of the, one of the teams that it may happen with. But New England, um, you know, Tennessee is going to stay the same. So I'd say New England, the Chargers. I think Antonio Pierce has locked himself into the Raiders. By the way, too. So I'll go Patriots, Chargers. Commanders, maybe Bears, four, uh, Atlanta, five, New Orleans, six, Carolina, seven. It's probably it, right? Am I missing anything? Obvious. Um, I think you pretty much nailed it. So there's seven opportunities, maybe, that the enemy could be up for. Maybe. Again, we've seen in the past that it didn't happen mm. for him. For whatever reason, I'm just saying if he views Washington as total chaos and wants did to get you say, out of there. Did you did you say Carolina? Uh, yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah. So yeah, okay. I mean it's a figure seven ish, seven ish opportunities. Um, which changed a little bit over the weekend because the Jets said Salah was definitely going to be back. Anyway, all right, let, let's get a quickie in here. Let's come back and let's look at some of the results of the weekend. 
where things stand, injuries. We'll give you a bunch of updates when we get back. Don't go anywhere. He's Tone. I'm Rob. We are Sports Take. All right, let's talk about Flynn Tree Services. Yes, Flynn Tree Services is an experienced, licensed, and insured Pennsylvania tree services company that will trim or remove any unwanted trees off of your property. They offer cost-effective solutions to any tree problem that you may face. So if you have any issues with your trees or on your property, uh, they're just a quick phone call away. And they serve southeastern Pennsylvania, South Jersey, and northern Delaware. Flynn Tree Services specializes in tree removal, stump grinding, as well as tree pruning. You could go to their Facebook or Instagram page for more information or a sampling of their work. Give Flynn Tree Services a call at 610-850-2848. 610-850-2848 or online at FlynnTreeServices.com. That's FlynnTreeServices.com. Go to get your game on. Go for the beers. Go for the cheers. Go for the hit and the hits. Go for the stakes and the stakes. Go to get your parlay on. Go to get your party on. Go for the scene. Go for the screens. Go for the gallery. Go for the win. Go to Ocean. Visit theoceanac.com to plan your visit. At Pond Lee Hockey, we've recovered billions of dollars for our clients, and we're confident we can do the same for you. With over 250 years of combined courtroom experience, We've helped over 100,000 injured clients obtain some of the largest settlements in Pennsylvania. One conversation is all it takes to help you and your family get back on track. If you've been injured in an accident, give Pond Lee Hockey a call. They're carving them up and good play calling along the way. First and goal at the six. field of life first trust bank is there for you because philadelphia dreams deserve a philadelphia bank Underdog Fantasy has a way for you to play alongside your favorite football team all season long with their Fantasy Pick'em game. You pick between two to five players, select whether they'll go higher or lower on one of their stats, then do what you usually do on a Sunday. Watch the games. You can win up to 20 times your money in a single game by going five for five. It's a fantasy game. And the sports betting show wants you to get involved. Go to underdogfantasy.com. When you sign up, use the promo code WIN, and Underdog will double your first deposit up to $100. That's underdogfantasy.com. Use the promo code WIN. Do you stream on a Roku, Fire Stick, Google TV, or Apple TV? Now you can watch 6ABC 24-7 with the 6ABC Philadelphia streaming app. And the big story on Action News. Search 6ABC <laughs> Philadelphia and start streaming today. E-A-G-L-E-S. Eagles. Tony Shields, Rob Ellis, hanging out with you on this Tuesday. I got it right. Tuesday, December 26th. Uh, all right. So let me let me run through because we we've hit the um standings in the NFC a bunch of times. But let, let's go through the AFC here, Tone, and just let everybody know everybody know what we're uh, what we're looking at, at here. So your one seed is Baltimore coming off that impressive win last night, where they they not only beat the Niners, I mean they physically just smacked them around. Um so they're the one seed at 12 and three right now. Miami's the two seed at 11 and four. The Chiefs, because they're winning their division, um, are nine and six, but they're the three seed. Same thing with Jacksonville. Excuse me, even though they're eight and seven, they're the four seed. Now, Cleveland, who just keeps doing it, 
somehow, some way with all the injuries. They're 10 and five. They're the five seed. Look out now. Buffalo's starting to get hot, even though they escaped that game against the Chargers. But they're nine and six. And then you have the Colts at eight and seven. And then after that, it's the Texans at eight and seven, the Steelers at eight and seven, and the Bengals at eight and seven. So um, it's tight at the bottom there for sure in the AFC. Uh, you, you've seen some teams get a little separation. Let's start with the Chiefs, man. Um, I, I thought Andy got away with it last year. Um, you know, they traded Tyreek Hill, and they had Smith Schuster, guys who were solid, but not any real big time game breaker types on the outside. You know, and you had Kelsey, but even a guy like Mahomes, you're seeing needs some more help. And I think that's a piece of this thing. And I just think general, they have that Super Bowl hangover feel to them, Tone. I watched that game yesterday, man. They were they were sloppy and bad yeah. to try and trick plays and fumbles and all this other stuff. It was just awful. You know, it's funny. It makes you put things in perspective for the Philadelphia Eagles, right? Totally. You know, you the two teams who won who were who were in the Super Bowl last year, they seem like they're just dragging into the playoffs. But you still have to give them respect, give them a certain level of respect when you play them because of how quickly things can turn around for teams like that because they have that that experience, you know, that gene, right? So the Chiefs, man, I don't know how far they go, but if I'm basing it off of what I've seen, they could very well be one and done because let's let's let's, let's really put it in perspective, right? As far as just Stan is going who they who they could potentially get who they could potentially play in the opening round. Right now, if everything holds true, Miami will play the Colts and the Chiefs will play the Bills. I think the that's, Bills get them. That's a tough one, man. That is a tough I think one. The Bill, I think the Bills catch them. Yeah. Catch them slipping. Yeah, it could be. I uh, look, I, you know, they Josh Allen has vaulted himself back in the MVP conversation. Uh, you know, he's got four, he's accounted for 40 touchdowns. I, I right now I'm going Lamar Jackson, but that's you know. That's a different discussion, which we can get into in a minute. But, um, yeah, I mean, th- uh, as you said earlier, you don't totally count the Chiefs out under any circumstance with Mahomes and Reed and that crew, and they have the, you know, winning gene. But still, I, they look a lot different this year. I, I would like Buffalo's chances. Yeah, would- look, listen to this. Miami will play the Colts. I think we got Miami beating the Colts, right? And then Yes, the I would agree with be- that. I would agree with then that. Then the Chiefs playing the Bills. We don't know, but I got the Bills winning that game, right? right? And then Jaguars, Browns. I got the Browns beating the Jaguars. I like the Browns big time. So, today. so that means the Ravens will have to play in, in the division round. The Ravens will have to play the Buffalo Bills. The Dolphins would have to play the Browns. Hmm. That is wild. That's not easy. That is wild. Yeah, that's, that's not easy by any stretch. I think, I think the Browns could beat the Dolphins. <laughs> you know what I mean? I do too. And right? I think the Bills could beat the Ravens. When like, you play the kind of defense the Browns play, and you know Flacco has has found something there. I mean, they they they've it's crazy. He was out of football for a really long stretch of this season, but he's fit in really well there. Uh, he really has. And um, you know, like I said, Stefanski to me should be in every coaching of the year candidate conversation but yeah they, i agree with you cleveland's dangerous man they are scary they are they are just like in the way they're playing like they have the third they have the third uh most amount of wins and they haven't had a quarterback for over seven weeks mm. it's insane imagine what that what they would look like if they were fully healthy if they had a quarterback if they didn't lose all the offensive linemen that they lost i thought they would fall off eventually i thought they would but that man, that defense in that running game just keeps them in the mix. Yeah, no, I agree. They're hot, uh, and you know the, the difference with with some of these teams and the Eagles is they're they're streaking at the right time. You know, mm-hmm. they're act together at the right time. But yeah, real MVP draws a uh, a Nick Foles parallel with Flacco. It's not crazy, not crazy, man. Uh, with what he's stranger doing. things have happened, so I, I can't put it past anybody at this point. All right, so the NFC, the way it would set up is um, Niners would have the bye. If the Eagles are the two, they would get Seattle at home. Then Detroit would get the Rams at home. How about that storyline with with Goff 
and, and Stafford and, and all those uh, great. The NFL would be, you know, drooling. That, that would be that would be a hell of a matchup. Oh my god! And then I'll tell you what I think Dallas would win. Uh, don't get me wrong, but Tampa's playing better at least, or mm-hmm. they might put up a fight against the Cowboys. If listen, was, that was Tampa gets five. a home game. Did Dallas on the road? Hey, listen, man. <laughs> Mayfield's had a pretty still. good year, all things considered. You know, he's come on in the second half of the uh, second half of the year for sure. Yeah, but I, I can't guarantee. Look, I understand the, the the Cowboys are a much better team than the Buccaneers. They are. Mm-hmm. I, I'm not debating that. But but the way the Cowboys have played on the road, right? And the Buccaneers, how they've come on as of late. It, is am I totally wrong in no. saying that the Buccaneers could? You know, can make the Cowboys nervous that day? No, not at all. No, no nervous, not at all. Uh, I mean, it's they found a little bit of a run game with Rashad White. Uh, we know how good Mike Evans is. The guy's a machine. You know, they have some they have some good defensive players too. So no, no, I don't think so. I mean, let me put it to you this way. You know, if you asked me this four or five weeks ago, I thought Todd Bowles would be out of a job there. Maybe not. Uh, Todd Bowles has done a pretty good job with that team. I'll tell you the other guy who's done a good job uh, with Tampa Bay. Uh, the guy's name is Dave Canales. He's their offensive coordinator. He, he's mm-hmm. a name to watch, um, you know, on the coaching head coaching front. I would just keep your eye on on him and you know, your ear out for that name. Uh, but, yeah, so the, the Eagles would be the two, so they would have to play. They wouldn't get the bye week because there's only one. If, if you forgot, they changed it up. When they added the wild card team, they also took one bye away. It used to be the top two teams in each conference. It's not that way anymore. So only would be only one would be off, but again, there's all, all things considered to be in the position that they're in right now, tone with two games left to potentially have a shot at the one seed with all the weird stuff that's happened with the Eagles this year. It's pretty amazing to think about. Yeah. Yeah. It's, 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 been, a, it's been a wacky season, man. <laughs> yeah, it has. Like, Whereas last year, it just felt like everything was so smooth. Everything was pretty clear this cut, right? This has been like clear, you know. clear cut contenders, clear cut pretenders. You know, it's this like this season has been. This is what the NFL wants, though. Oh, it's like you know, Roger Goodell and the boys are uh, at the at the home office are are loving life. Let's be honest, the AFC especially. Who mm-hmm. can we definitively say in the AFC is going to win it all? I can't. I understand the Ravens beat the 49ers last night, but I still can't definitively say they're going to just run through the AFC because of. I, I just can't say that the mm-hmm. Ravens still, at least Lamar Jackson and the Ravens have to prove that he can win a playoff game and, and, and st- actually string together some playoff wins. Put it that right. way. Right. Because he only has one playoff win in his career. Mm-hmm. Um, he has to prove that he can string together some You're playoff right. the wins. You're right. That's a big question with them is what it looks like in the playoffs. You're exactly, exactly. right. Exactly. Right. Uh, can, can, can Baltimore secure a home conference championship game? Mm-hmm. And they, it's possible, but they they, they got to prove that. You know, if you look at the whole AFC side, it's just a bunch of teams who are just they they, they it's it's uh, it's it's a tough way to go, man. Like it's going to be like a seven seed or a six seed could knock out a two or three seed in, in, in that in that conference, man. It's that it's that crazy. Whereas though on the on the NFC side, you know, you pretty know the. You know the Seahawks and the Rams. You know their limitations. You know where their limitations are, right? Tampa Bay, you know their limitations. Um, but AFC, man, I don't I don't think any of those teams really have a ceiling except for the Colts. Everybody else can very well get there. And the Jaguars. Jaguars have a ceiling, too. Oh, sure. Um, it could go a lot of different ways, for sure. Yeah, but, but Bills, Browns, Chiefs, Dolphins, Ravens. I have no idea how the AFC championship is going to look. No idea. No, no. I you see teams trending the wrong direction. Jacksonville's trending the wrong direction, right? Yeah, you, man. You can see what that's a, pretty obvious. What a what a fall. What a yeah, fall. Major fall. Uh the the Chiefs are trending in the wrong direction, but they're the Chiefs, so you give them a little bit of leeway. Buffalo's ascending, Cleveland's ascending, Baltimore's ascending. Miami is too. I mean, you take nothing away from Miami. This is an eleven four team. You have hot teams there. And you got a couple teams like the Colts are maintaining, like they're hanging in there to their credit with against a lot of odds with injuries and stuff. The Texans, if they get CJ Stroud back, it's not, you know, out of the question that they they would take that last spot. It's not out of the question that the Steelers or the Bengals would. I don't I think it's less likely. Like, do I really trust Mason Rudolph, you know, to, to give you two straight good weeks? Probably not. At least I don't. 
He was good last week to his credit, but do I trust him on the road? I don't think so. You know, right. I think they're in where, where are they? Uh, Seattle. They're in Seattle this week. I like Seattle in that game. They're kind of finding their footing a little bit after that, that, you know, losing four straight. They've gotten their act together a little bit. Had a nice little comeback this past weekend. Yeah, I agree. Seattle's a team that's interesting. Um, back into the playoff mix. Um, shouldn't be because uh, the Eagles should take care of business, but it's another conversation. Um, wow, hold on, sidebar. I didn't know Nick Mullins threw for 411 yards. It's yeah, it wasn't line. enough, but he, he went nuts, yeah. Yeah, four interceptions, though. But Yep, and the last one was they were driving with the last one. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, so but so far, man, um, fun week of football. Um, I didn't see the Steelers beating the Bengals like that. I didn't, I didn't either. No. I I didn't think I think they were thought they were grasping at straws with, with Mason Rudolph, like I said, and and you know, he came up big for them. Uh, to yeah, and I, and I and I definitely didn't see the Bills going, you know, touch and go with the Chargers. Didn't see that coming no. either. Nope. No, so. I, I, it's a hard league to predict week in and week out. There's no other way to put it. It just is. It's a hard week. It's a hard league to figure out. Um, you know, like the Eagles are massive favorites again this week. I think they're 12, 12 and a half point favorites this week against the Cardinals. Uh, you know, uh, do you view it like there's no way you can trust them with that kind of point spread? Like the game this past week was like 13 or 14, the one they just they lost won, yesterday. Right, right, they won by eight. So it's yeah. like, like I don't, I don't, I'm not taking the Eagles against any spreads. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, and, and you just think, all right, well, if this is the game they clear, clean up their act with the turnovers, then they'll be able to roll a team. But w- until you see it, can't believe it. All right, so let's look at some other games uh, around the league. So you mentioned the Lions. They won. Uh, they beat the Vikings. They're 11-4 and four now. It's They have clinched the NFC North. I think it was like the first time in like 30 years, something crazy, they end up winning the North. So uh, they have done – Dan Campbell's done a nice job. You know, all things told, and they just have so many weapons on offense. St. Brown just makes plays left and right, and they have a lot of other guys. You know, Jameer Gibbs looks like he's starting to come into his own. Mm -hmm. Uh, David Montgomery was a really good move by them. Uh, Laporta, how about this draft? The Gibbs and Laporta and, you know, and last year Hutchinson. Detroit's doing a nice job, um, all things considered. The Bucks beat the Jags. And, you know, we talked a little bit about the disappointment of, of Jacksonville, but Tampa, you know, it has, has really come on um, to their credit and they're playing really, really solid football. You know, I, I thought they were going to be bad. I knew they had a pretty good defense, but I just thought watching them last year with Brady was so tired and stale. Yeah, but I mean. Mayfield's giving them a little life. Yeah, they're on a four-game winning streak right now. Um, the longest yeah. one streak of the season. Um. You got to get credit where credit is due. Now, obviously, they're going they're going up against some pretty lesser opponents. Um, two of the opponents were divisional matchups: Panthers and Falcons. And then they took it to the Packers, and they took it to the Jaguars. So, I mean, the, the, those are some pretty solid victories, all things considered. And then this week, week seventeen, they're going to have an uh, an underwhelming Saints team, and they got the Panthers again. So, could the Buccaneers close out the season? Um, on a six-game winning streak, it's very possible based mm-hmm. on the way they're playing. Oh, yeah. I, I agree with you. I, that very well could happen. Uh, let's go to some other other odds and ends uh, around the league. Uh, Doug Peterson says that, you know, um, Trevor Lawrence injured his shoulder in the game. He already went in having, <laughs> having just, you know, passed concussion protocol. So he injured his shoulder, and he said it's – or Doug shoulder, said it's everything. Angle. Everything he is, yeah, yeah, man. He, and, and, and you know, I know he's been playing banged up, but I I've been waiting and waiting and waiting for him to go to the next level, and he hasn't yet. You know, he's been mm-hmm. okay. He had been special. Yeah, yeah. La- Lawrence. Talent is there. Yeah, but still, you know. Okay, I try to I try to put it in perspective. Yeah. Like, they are the Jags. So, what Doug Peterson and Trevor Lawrence and they're trying to do, or what they're trying to do is, is a pretty difficult feat. They're trying to change Jacksonville football culture. Mm-hmm. It's tough. But I do understand where you're coming from in terms of waiting for Trevor Lawrence just to have that 
spectacular breakout performance. I mean, I would have to I would have to go back into his his game logs, but he hasn't really had a stellar 2023 campaign, right? Definitely. I would agree with you 100%. All right, other other um other injuries. Uh Jalen Waddles dealing with a high ankle um Ooh. for the Dolphins. That's that's also they're dealing with, you know, Tyree Kill, you know, being a little bit banged up too, so you know, you got both of those guys that you're trying to get through, trying to nurse through this thing um, mm-hmm. and get them going. So that that's you know, something to keep your eye on if you're if you're a, a Miami fan for sure. At this point in the season, the war of attrition is everything. It's it. You know, and and when it comes to Philadelphia Eagles, they're going to be getting some guys back. You know, they're mm-hmm. getting healthy at a good time. You know, other teams, 49ers, you know, they're dealing with some key injuries. Anything. Look, Anything is possible over these next several weeks. Anything is possible, but but at the but at the very least, you want to make sure you do everything in your power to make sure you cover all your bases. You check all the boxes you need to check to make sure you're prepared enough for the opponent, regardless of who they put out there. Right. I think I, I think I think that's the struggle the Philadelphia Eagles and a lot of teams are dealing mm-hmm. with right now. No, fair enough. Fair enough. I mean, I, I look at you know other some of the other. Yeah, you're right. The Eagles, if they get Avante Maddox back. Um, you're going to get Slay back, I believe, before the playoffs. Maybe they try and play him in that last Giants game just to get him, you know, back into the mix. So you get those two back. Um, then all of a sudden, you would have all three of your starting corners, mm-hmm. one of your starting safeties who was blank and chip, and Bayard. That's about as good as you've looked health wise in a long time back there. Um, you're going, they think, I don't know. I don't know where things stand with Zach Cunningham, actually. I don't want to speak out of turn because he's, you know, I, I don't know. But if you could get him back and then all of a sudden you have a little bit of depth with Shaq Leonard and Morrow. Mm-hmm. Okay. Not bad. Not terrible. Um, your defensive line is pretty healthy, right? And correct me if I'm wrong. Am I missing anybody from earlier in the year? No, I think they're in pretty good no, shape. Everybody, everybody's pretty healthy on the D-line. Uh, so you're you're at about maximum capacity body wise on that side of the ball for as good as it's going to get. Offensively, um, you know, really your 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 O line is is going to be back after Dickerson comes back from the thumb, right? And am I missing anybody else? Mm. I don't think so. I think that's it because Jurgens had a pretty good game yesterday, so he's back. Obviously, yeah, he's back. Yeah. Um, can can he stay on the field? That's the question. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I think I I, I think that pretty much covers it. The, the, yeah. The, 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 the going into the playoffs, if everything continues to trend the way it's trending, they're going to be as healthy as they've been off year all year. Yep. Now right. they got to they got to string it together. That's it. That's it. All right. So a couple other things. Um, they don't. The Vikings aren't sure if they're going to roll with Nick Mullins or Jaron Hall, uh, the rookie, for their next game. The Steelers are likely going to keep going with Rudolph. I don't know why you would change that up after the way he played last week. Um, you know, what, what are your better options? Mitch, Mitch Trubisky at this point or, you know, pick it out there on one leg with a bad ankle. But anyway, that's what they may do. Um, Dorian Thompson Robinson placed on the IR. So PJ Walker comes back. He's going to back up Flacco. Um you know, it's it, beyond that. It's it's not a lot else. You know, in, in terms of the injuries, there everybody else is in pretty decent shape. But um, I did find it interesting. Speaking of that, did you see some of the quotes from Shaq Leonard yesterday after the game? No, I missed them. What did he say? So he he was pretty ticked off, man. He said, "Quote: They wrote me off, talked down on my name. I'm here to prove it. Prove I can still play. Prove I can still make plays." He, he said that to the Inquirer. Um, and, and, you know, had a good week. Right. But uh, this would be one of the big time stories. If this guy finds anywhere near the form that he had back in his Colts days, if that, that would be one of those Howie off the street moves that, you know, goes down in the archives. Yeah. Here, cause here's the thing, right. You know, although it was the giants for a guy like him coming off of his situation with the injuries or whatever, he needs any sort of positivity and confidence is he he needs as much of that as much of that he can get because he's dealt with the two back injuries and back-to-back yeah. seasons and has a, he's been cut by the Colts and when you factor all that in together he should feel good about his performance he played very 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 well he made an impact um can you know can he build off of this right um as his confidence grows can the production continue to grow and, and can this defense follow suit can he be an energizer 
um, you know, for that Philadelphia Eagles defense. It all remains to be seen. But, um, yeah, you know, when you, when you think about how far he's come, you know, he needed that kind of game, right? Yeah. Regardless yeah, of who for he his played own against, psyche. yeah, just for his yeah, own psyche. No yeah, doubt. regardless of who they played, he needed he needed that he needed that confidence. He needed that performance, you know, to to to, to kind of set the stage for what's potentially to come. Exactly. So, um, listen, man, I like the confidence. I like I like the self assurance. Um, you know, let's just hope he can stay healthy and continue to string it together. That's all you yeah. can hope for. I I agree. Like, yeah, I I love what I saw. I need to see more. I need to see more. It was, yeah, I need to see more. Well, against the Giants, it's a good start, but I need to see a little bit more um, out of him. Have you seen enough? This it may seem premature as well. Have you seen enough from Ringo to think they have something there? I'm not no. telling you you're ready. No, nah, you need more. No, yeah. I need I need I need I need more. I mean. Um, so good game against the Seahawks, all mm-hmm. things considered good game. Um, good game against the Giants, all things, all things considered. Right. But, um, did he prove anything to me by dealing with Drew Locke and Tommy DeVito and Tyrod Taylor? I mean, you didn't really prove much of anything that, you know, you cannot mess that you, you, you're not that bad. Right. That, that, that's what you prove, that you're not that bad. But um, he didn't really prove too much f- to me. Um, but again, so much more left football, so much more football left to be played. Um, I, I, I said this. I'm not gauging his team over who beating the Giants or beating the Cardinals, beating the Giants again. I can't gauge this team properly off of that, mm-hmm. you know. So, um, it all remains to be seen for me. Yeah, no, but I know, but I, but I know a lot of people are not going to like that. So, well, let's <laughs> so, no. Listen, it's it's fair. I think it's a fair way to look at it. Um, mention the MVP thing. Would you say that Jackson, especially considering Purdy was the leader in the clubhouse and had four picks last night, has vaulted himself in there? Uh, I think the MVP is between Lamar Jackson and Christian McCaffrey at this point. Okay. That's what I think. Purdy eliminated himself last night. I think Purdy eliminated himself last night. For you faced off against uh, a guy who's directly competing against you for MVP, you threw four interceptions. You were you were you were a complete liability on the field last night. And, and what did he do? Um, what did he do in that game? What did, what did what did Lamar do in that game? Excuse me. Oh, Lamar had a big time. So, game. so Lamar twenty three for thirty five, two fifty two passing yards, two passing touchdowns, seven carries, forty five rushing yards. I mean, also kept a lot of plays alive, and then hit a guy down the field. Like made some yeah, unbelievable. He was, plays. he was he was he was spectacular. So, uh, for me, I think Brock Purdy has definitely um, taken a step back amongst voters. I think it's either going to be Lamar Jackson or Christian McCaffrey. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think it's uh, I, the good thing is, well, the interesting thing, at least from a drama standpoint, it's going to come down to the last two weeks. Mm-hmm. You know, you one guy's going to have to outshine the other guy. I, I would say. Yeah. Jack, I even I, I even believe Dak hurt himself, too, over these past two weeks. So, uh, yeah, I, I would agree with that. I would agree with that. Totally. Yeah. I, I think I think now it's Jackson. McCaffrey Allen, maybe, you know, oh, Josh. Oh, mm. Hmm. Has, I mean, has Josh Allen, I mean, he's back in the conversation, but has he done enough? Well, the to, thing that hurts him, the the obvious thing is is turnovers, right? It's a thing we always talk about with Jalen. It, yeah. it can't be you know ignored. He's got 15 interceptions, yeah. um, and he's lost three fumbles, so he's 18 turnovers. So he's right there with Jalen in terms of the amount of turnovers. But right. he's accounted for 40 touchdowns, 27 in the air, 13 on the ground. Um, he's over. Over 3,700 in the air, over 400 on the ground. You know, he's going to put up just some monster 93%, uh, 93.7% passer rating and a 66.5 completion percentage. I, I think you, you could make it, you could throw things out there to hurt all these guys. Like Allen has the turnovers. Lamar doesn't have a ton of throwing touchdowns. Like I don't personally care about that. I'm a combo touchdown guy. You know that. I always yeah. talk about that with Jalen. So that doesn't hurt me, but I, hurt his case for me but maybe some others it does which i think right. is bs um and mccaffrey's numbers are ridiculous i, I mean y- you look at what he's done combined even last night in a game where they ended up getting killed uh, he showed up uh, where not a lot of others did i mean right now uh rushing he's leading the league 
1,003. He's almost at 1,400 on the ground. And that's with, a, with an almost five and a half yard per carry average. 14 yeah. touchdowns on the ground. And then he's receiving numbers. He's got 537 receiving yards on 63 catches and seven <sighs> touchdowns. I mean, that he got, he's, they are, they are monster numbers, but they just don't like voting for running backs. I mean, they like to give it to a quarterback usually. Yeah, this may be a different story, though, man. Christian McCaffrey is. Yeah, I think it's uh, been since Adrian Peterson, which is, you a, know, that's a minute. He's a know. monster amongst men, you know. Yeah. Um, and Lamar Jackson, the touchdown numbers may hurt him. He doesn't turn the ball over like that. So, uh, man, see, Purdy, like when you when you see, Purdy probably wouldn't have lost that much if. He probably threw one interception or something. Yeah, if they like just lost and he turned it yeah, over. Yeah, if they just lost straight up, you threw yeah, yeah. four interceptions, man. Yeah, it, that was a killer. You know, p- people already people already think you're kind of being, you know. Yeah, you're a game manager to begin with. Yeah, people already have their opinion about you. And then when you have when you go up against certain teams or certain defenses and you look like that, it's just not a good look. If, if anything, it ele- if anything, it elevated the value. Of Christian McCaffrey. Remember, Trent Williams went out too. So it's like Trent Williams goes out. You go up against a, a mildly good def- uh, a defense that's good, mm-hmm. and you look like that. Four interceptions. It, 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 if anything, it elevates the value of Trent Williams and Christian McCaffrey and lowers the value of, Doc, uh, of Brock Purdy. Yeah, I agree. But I, agree. I still think. He, but I but I still think he's playing very 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 well. Um, one of the uh, one of the better quarterbacks in the NFL right now. Don't want to take nothing away from him, but I just believe his MVP candidacy has taken a major hit after that four interception performance. Oh, for sure. I agree with you. All right, let me let's run through the scores here and we'll go back to Saturday here. For I know a lot of people had, you know, a lot going on over the weekend, holiday wise. Um, so the Steelers beat the uh the Bengals 34 to 11. You know, how about this? So in that game, uh, you had Mason Rudolph throwing for 290 yards, two touchdowns, no picks. You had Jake Browning in a losing effort throwing for 335 yards. But the difference was he threw three interceptions in that game. So uh, the backup quarterbacks at least putting up a lot of yardage there. So then uh, the Bills had to eke one out on uh, on Saturday night. They won 24-22 over the Chargers. You know, Allen had all three other touchdowns, you know, whatever. But the, it was – it could have been ugly, you know. Uh, it could have that that one would not have have sat well with Bills fans, but they're nine mm-hmm. and six now. Uh, the Colts lost to the Falcons. That's a tough loss for for Indy. That's a that's not a good loss, but they lost twenty nine to ten. Uh, a nice game for uh, for Bijan and and uh, Taylor Honick. He's been the quarterback. Uh, the Seahawks won twenty to seventeen. They had to come back in that game against the Titans. Uh, Geno came back, threw a couple of touchdown passes, had a good game. Uh, the Lions beat the Vikings, at where that's the game you talked about. Nick Mullins had 411 passing yards, but the four picks killed him. Uh, good game for Justin Jefferson, who, who is back now, but Detroit just had too much. Uh, the Jets beat the Commanders. We mentioned they've lost six, eight straight, has Washington. Jets uh, are six and nine on the season. Then you go to the Packers, beat the Panthers 33 30, a tight one. <coughs> Actually, a game that the Panthers really could have won. The Browns beat the Texans 36-22. No C.J. Stroud in that game. Uh, Flacco, 368 yards. Uh, Tampa beat Jacksonville 30-12. to Both teams are 8-7 and seven now. Bears beat the Cardinals. Cardinals have lost four or five on the season. They are 3-12. and 12. Um, Dolphins 22-20 over the Cowboys. We know that. Patriots beat the Broncos. That was a strange one. I didn't see that coming. Yeah, I didn't Denver. see that coming at all. That was um, that was damning. Um, I don't, I don't think Denver makes the playoffs um, no. at this rate. Yeah, you're. I think that was that was the nail right there. The magic is wore off. Yeah. Yep. Uh, that's why you don't dig yourself monstrous holes like they did. Um, the Raiders beat the Chiefs. Amazing. Uh, that game was in Kansas City too. On top of everything else, um, twenty to fourteen. The Eagles, we know, beat the Giants 33-25. and then of course the final last night. It, it, you know, it was 33-19. It doesn't even feel that close. You know, it feel like felt like it was uh, even more of a blowout than that. So that's, yeah, it was. Uh, I mean, um, you you can make an argument. It's really 33-12, and yeah. uh, they just got that last meaningless late, meaningless late, kind of late garbage. You know, right there. Yeah. All right. Let's um let's get a timeout in. We'll we'll look back at what the Sixers did last night. They did not have Joel Embiid. Uh, what they ended up doing 
in Miami. We'll swing it back to the Eagles as well. We'll hit a bunch of different things around the world of sports. So don't go anywhere. That's Tone to Shields. I am Rob Ellis. We are Sports Take. Right back. I remember getting my heart broken when they lost the Super Bowl in 2004. We were big Eagles fans. We moved to South Philly because of the Eagles. When they won, we went straight to Broad Street and uh, everybody was going nuts over there. And it was just a, a memory that you'll never forget. Go to get your game on. Go for the beers. Go for the cheers. Go for the hit and the hits. Go for the stakes and the stakes. Go to get your parlay on. Go to get your party on. Go for the scene. Go for the screens. Go for the gallery. Go for the win. Go to Ocean. Visit theoceanac.com to plan your visit. At Pond Lee Hockey, we've recovered billions of dollars for our clients, and we're confident we can do the same for you. With over 250 years of combined courtroom experience, we've helped over 100,000 injured clients obtain some of the largest settlements in Pennsylvania. One conversation is all it takes to help you and your family get back on track. If you've been injured in an accident, give Pond Lee Hockey a call. Field of life. First Trust Bank is there for you. Seven is on three. One, two, three. Because Philadelphia dreams deserve a Philadelphia bank. Underdog Fantasy has a way for you to play alongside your favorite football team all season long with their Fantasy Pick'em game. You pick between two to five players, select whether they'll go higher or lower on one of their stats, then do what you usually do on a Sunday. Watch the games. You can win up to 20 times your money in a single game by going five for five. It's a fantasy game. And the sports betting show wants you to get involved. Go to underdogfantasy.com. When you sign up, use the promo code WIN, and Underdog will double your first deposit up to $100. That's underdogfantasy.com. Use the promo code WIN. Do you stream on a Roku, Fire Stick, Google TV, or Apple TV? Now you can watch 6ABC 24-7 with the 6ABC Philadelphia streaming app. And the big story on Action News. Search 6ABC Philadelphia and start streaming today. E-A-G-L-E-S. Eagles. Final segment of the program. That is Tone to Shields. I am Rob Ellis. All right, Tone. So uh, just hop off football for a second here. Sixers lose to the Heat last night. No Joel and Bede for the Sixers. No, um, no Jimmy Butler for the Heat. Um, it, you know what? I thought they showed a lot of heart hanging around um, in the game. They lost 119, 113. It was a night where this was a very rare off night like a badly off night for Tyrese Maxey you I don't yeah. think you do that very often it happens you know it happens he was four for 20 uh from the floor one of eight from three and if he's even okay they probably win the game if he's even decent he was just yeah. off. it happens there was a point in the game where he was like oh for nine like he, yeah. he just the shot wasn't falling you know and, and, and sometimes it's, it, it's sometimes it get like that we've all played pick up and we just know it's just it's just no matter what you do, the boss and not going in the hoop. Um, 
it follows you sometimes. So yep. um, you know, I'm not emphasize. I mean, I, I know the Christmas the Christmas games are always you know exciting, but you know, Joel, no Joel B, no Jimmy Butler, the two marquee guys of the of, of the ticket. You know, it was already kind of you know written in stone that the game wasn't going to be as exciting as um, we wanted it to be. I was hoping for a, a Christmas Day breakout from from Maxi. Yeah, I was, hoping, I was hoping for that, but I mean, it doesn't mean anything in the grand scheme of things. It doesn't change how I feel about this team in any way. Same. It did, that does no effect on anything. It's just it's one of those games. And he, again, I, I guarantee you, they play. I think they play Orlando tomorrow. You watch, Maxi will go off in, in that game. I'll, I'll guarantee yeah. you that. But Jaime Hawkins had a big game uh, for the Heat. He was a good draft pick by them. A kid out of UCLA. Uh, played extremely well. I like some of the things. Mo Bamba did a nice job for the Sixers. He got an opportunity last night and, and showed you a little something uh, in the game. Tobias played well for the second straight night. If he can just continue to be consistent for them, uh, that's what I take away, you know, more than anything else. It's one of those games. Yeah, it is what it is. Yep. Yeah, and everybody's attention was <laughs> was mostly on the Eagles, although it did time out nicely from a sporting perspective. Well, it Eagles did. It did. At like 730 right into the 8 o'clock uh, tip. Yeah. It worked out. Yeah, it did. So they end up losing. All right, so Flyers uh, catch you up on what's going on with them right now, and it's been a, a really fun start to, to their season so far, 18-11-4. and four. Uh, They go out to the West Coast tone uh, Thursday, actually Thursday, Friday, Sunday, Tuesday. They are in Vancouver, Seattle, Calgary, and Edmonton. So a uh, bunch of late starts here for the Flyers. Oh. Uh, Vancouver, yeah. Vancouver is in British Columbia, right? Correct. Now, is British Columbia in Canada? Yes. Okay, yeah. I've always wondered how how that worked. Okay. Yeah, uh, you're gonna. You're, they're kind of dancing the line of of that that part of Canada. Then they go to Seattle. Then they go to Calgary. Then they go to Edmonton. So you're 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 sort of dancing on like the western part of all that. Mm -hmm. uh, if that makes sense. And then um, after that, they come back. Uh, for a geez, four game homestand, one, two, three, four game homestand. So we'll see if they can keep this thing going. Like, ultimately, do I think they're going to be a team that's seven games over 500? Probably not. Um, but do I like what I've seen so far from them? Yes, they play tough, play really, really tough. Um, yeah. and good, good, strong hockey, that's for sure. All right, so let, let's get it back to the to the birds here. So the two teams that they play coming up, you got a three and 12 Arizona team. Coming in here again, there is a little bit of a you know Jonathan Gannon angle to this thing, which does make it intriguing to see if, you know how much intel he he can impart on his team to take away some of the Eagles' tendencies and a five and team a five and ten Giants team. So you're you're playing two teams that you sh you should smash. Now they should have smashed that team last night. And they didn't. Um, you still of the mindset that they will win these last two games? Yeah, I mean, sounds too good to be true, right? Um, but like I said to you last week, I think they win these games, but they're going to find a way to make it interesting. And that's my yeah. only issue, really. Yeah. They're going to be like teams that they should be head and shoulders, head and shoulders above. They're going to, you know, they're going to treat them for about a quarter or so, like they're on their level. And it's going to keep that team in the game. And, you know, the Eagles are going to have to make a couple plays down a stretch, you know, to close off the matchups. But. You know, I, like I said, I, I'm not I'm not in the position to walk into any game with the Philadelphia Eagles just saying, oh, they're just going to smack this team. No, I think they're going to win the game, but uh, it's they, they're, they're going to make it way more entertaining than it has to be. Yeah, I I would agree. I mean, well, let, let's start with Arizona. Who they have this week. If you look at the, the league standings, so the league standings are basically, you know, pretty self-explanatory, but it's best to last right now. Arizona. Uh, has the second worst record uh, in the NFL, only behind Carolina, who doesn't even own their their own pick, which is a nightmare scenario. Uh, your sense here of what they may do, do you think that they will take a quarterback or do you think they're going to roll with Kyler Murray and try to help themselves in other places? Uh, they're rolling with Kyler. They're going to spend them. They're going to spend the assets in uh, other places. Uh, look, he's a tough defender. He, he He's a tough defense. Like it, it, It's hard to defend Kyler Murray because of how dan dynamic his game is. I don't know how explosive. I haven't watched him play since he's been back, um, but I don't, and, and I don't know how explosive, how explosive he is. He still is after dealing with, you know, um, that major. What was his knee, right? Yes, the ACL. So, yeah. So, who knows how explosive he is or has been? Mm -hmm. All remains to be seen. Regardless, he still has a lot of speed on him, though. 
He's going to be a tough cover. I think the Philadelphia Eagles, they struggle against mobile quarterbacks. They struggled against Josh Allen. They couldn't get him up the field. They even struggled with Tyrod Taylor, you know, a little bit um, as far as to keep him in the pocket. So we're going to see how this thing pans out. Uh, I think there's definitely going to be moments on third down, third and eight, third and nine. Where if we, we we think we got Kyler Murray dead to rights, and all of a sudden he escapes and he breaks up for a 12, 15 yard run, we're going to see a lot of those. Um, you know, this coming Sunday. Yeah, I, I don't think that. I I know some people are are saying in the chat that they're tanking. I don't think they're tanking. I, I think they're just not good. Uh-huh. Like I still think the the objective for them is to try and win. Now, ultimately, you can you can have yourself tank by just taking the talent off the roster, and I think that's kind of you know what they've done. But yeah, if they were ta- if if they were blatant, maybe they're, maybe they're not blatantly tanking. But if if they were blatantly tanking to you you know to you guys' point, I don't think they would have let Kyler come back. Right, you you'd be rolling with the the, the trash that they have. You, you know what I mean, like uh, Clayton Tune and, and and some of the other backups that they would be rolling out. That's probably what you would likely do. I mean, even look at the Giants. I mean, the Giants are what they are, but they're not tanking. That team's still trying. You know, yeah, they definitely were good. trying. They, they were trying yesterday for sure. Yeah. And, um, so so far, Colin Murray's played six games. Yep. Um. By the by the end of the season, he'll play eight. So he played basically half of the season. Yeah. Um. I'll tell you what you what jumps out, Tone, when you look at his numbers. Hold on, I have it. So what jumps out to me when I look at his numbers is he's been sacked 16 times in six games. Not bad. No, that's a lot. Let me see. Let me do the math. Hold on. 16 divided by six. I'm tripping. Sorry, you guys. I wasn't a math major. Uh, it's, le- it's it's two and change. That's a, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's almost three sacks a game. Yeah, that's not that good. That's not good. Yeah, not I mean, for good. a mobile he's, guy. He's been a lot. For a mobile and, guy, right. Six TDs and four interceptions. Now, their leading receiver is their tight end, Tyler Tyler or Trey McBride. He's got seventy-two catches, seven hundred forty-three yards. That's good. That's a quietly really good year, but it just tells you yeah they don't have for a tight out. end that no one knows yeah. about. Yeah, yeah. There's not much else. Now they do run it pretty decently with James Conner. He's got seven hundred sixty-two yards, almost five yards per carry. He's good. But I told you earlier, their deep their offense is twenty-sixth in scoring. They do run it well. They're ninth in rushing, but they're 29th in passing. Most of that is mm-hmm. because you were playing with backups until Murray came back. Defensively, 31 points, 32nd rush, 16th in pass. You know, it's they're one in seven on the road, too. They only have one road win this season. Wow. Yeah. I'm going to tell you the same thing we talked about last week. This should be an easy win. You know what's crazy? Kaiser White's been on IR for like a month, and he still leads their team in tackles. No kidding. By a long shot. Wow. He has 90 yeah. tackles. The next the next closest guy is Buda Baker with 73. Jalen Thompson, 73. Josh Wood, 61. Um, they've been they've batted a lot of injuries on defense this, this season. But Kaiser White has 90 total tackles on a year, and he's been on, he's only played 11 games. Mm. Um, so he's been he's been their best defender when he's been out there. Um, the most consistent one, I guess I'll say, but yeah, man, this should be a game the Philadelphia Eagles win, but they're going to be challenged with, you know, James Conner. They're going to be challenged with uh, Kyler Murray's um, speed and elusiveness in the pocket. Um, Yeah, man, this game is going to be uncomfortable to watch. Yeah, probably. Probably will. Um, all right, so we, we mentioned, you know, let's go uh, with some positives here. Britton Covey, 54-yard. Punt return. Um, he's he's making a real push to be the punt returner in the Pro Bowl, and, and as he should, you know, I, I give him credit. He 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 should be uh, in consideration for that for sure. That was a good sign. DeAndre Swift returning back to really earlier in the season kind of form was a really good sign. I thought Jalen had his moments like that. You mentioned the throw to AJ Brown, which was a great throw where he just kind of dropped it in. I just thought he did a really good job not taking off, but climbing up the pocket, knowing where he was exactly on the field and making that play. So there were some positives there. All three guys, I mean, if you think about it, AJ, Devontae, and Goddard all put up pretty good numbers, Mm -hmm. all things considered. He spread the ball out to those three very, very nicely. So that was a good thing. Um, Shaq Leonard, seven tackles, a sack, two tackles for losses. Reddick with four QB hits was a very good sign as well. Mm-hmm. Um, so they had some they had some good things to you know going on in this game. There were some other things that were their fault that that overshadowed it. Some things were a little bit of bad luck, but nonetheless, um, you know, the biggest thing is 
Stop turning the ball over. They have 23 and 15 games as a team. Uh, Jalen's got 18. And again, some of that is bad luck, but still, uh, you know, that's what you, you can't have happen because that's going to offset all the good that you did. Yeah. Yeah. At this point in the season, the turnovers, you know, it's almost like at this point you got to bank on them turning the ball over at least once. You just don't know, you know, you just don't know where or how it's going to happen. Yeah. Um, you know, there was a point, there was a point where I was saying to myself, you know, I trust Jalen Hurts with the ball more than anybody. Mm-hmm. Um, now he's liable. He, he's liable to making a mistake somewhere. So he so he needs to find a way to shake that off. Um, I'm not sure what goes into the off season, um, as far as you know doing that. But it's just it just it just comes comes down to being a better a better decision maker, um, making more making more good plays than bad plays. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's it. And he look, we know he's capable of it. We saw him do it last year. He was great at taking mm-hmm. care of the football last. And that really hasn't wasn't his mo in college either. This he's always a guy who's really taking yeah, care of the ball. Yeah, this is new. For, this is new territory. This is new territory yeah. for him. Yeah. I, I think, you know, the other thing is, Tone, when it went, like we all, because he had such a great year last year, I think we all thought that he was just like a finished product yeah. where he, where, where there weren't going to be any little stumbles. And that was, that's probably unfair considering he's, you know, still relatively young at 25 years old, that there are going right. to be some mistakes made and, you know, that you can learn off and get better from. And, you know, I think it's just natural. To, you talk to any quarterback, and they're going to tell you in their third year as a starter, they're nowhere near what they were in their sixth year as a starter. And he's, you know, he's going through some growing pains. It's not a linear yeah. climb. Right, right, yeah. I, that's a good point. It's not a linear climb. It's not as simple as just one foot in front of the other. You're going to have moments where you take a step or two back, but you have mm-hmm. to find a way to always take more steps forward than you do back. Yeah. Um, Turnovers aside, when you look at his numbers, you say, okay, he had a pretty decent season, pretty good season. Um, More touchdowns this year, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Um, He's going to have more yards thrown this year. Just got to clean up the turnovers, man. Only only two games left in the season, so they are what they are as far as turnovers. He's going to – he has 18 on the season right now. Um, I think that's as many turnovers he had in the past two seasons combined, right? Right. Something like that. Yeah, I mean, I I think that – I think that we would look at his year if the turn if you cut the turnovers even in half, I think we'd look at it as this guy had a really good year. Maybe not quite the level that he had last year, just because the offense has been up and down. But I think if the turnover numbers weren't where they were, we'd be talking about him at, with like no concern whatsoever. And there is some concern with the way this year. Yeah, going. because I mean, look, he has twenty passing touchdowns on the season. 15 rushing. It's 35 total touchdowns. I mean, you cut those turnovers and you cut them turnovers from 18 to nine with 35 touchdowns on the season, 4,000 passing yards, um, just over 600 rushing yards. I mean, they're that's really a good of, numbers. That's yeah. a hell of a season. It's right. the turnovers. The turnovers cannot continue to happen. It's, yeah. It's killing them. Yeah. And you, you know, you're asking, obviously, he's being asked to do a lot, but that's, that's the, that's the gig. Yeah. That's the gig. That's true. You know, I mean, I, I would say, um, you know, if, if you look at last night, like we mentioned, that was that was one you don't put on him. You put it on Dallas Goddard. But there was also the play before that where it was a really not a good throw. So I think these things usually even themselves out. Like you hope most of the time uh, bad calls by the official even themselves out. Uh, they don't always, but you hope so. Um, but he's also been let down a couple of times, um, you know, by his receivers, by others around him. And again, I don't think the defense makes his life that much easier with short fields most of the time. So he's usually having to drive the field uh, a long ways. Like the, that was the again the great thing about the Covey return was I think they scored what three plays later after yeah. he, he he drops them at you know that fifty four yarder. It was perfect. Like you could not have started that game better. You got to You got to what three and out to start the game defensively. You get the punt return. The Eagles go right in for the touchdown. It's twenty to three at the half. Mm-hmm. It was just what the doctor ordered. And then, you know, then it's then it, it be, they became what they are this season. They let teams back in games through head scratching ways. Like I had, I knew a couple people like fitness rebel on, on, uh, on Twitter said I had to turn it off, put the Sixer go and jump to the Sixers pregame stuff where she couldn't take anymore. <laughs> it's pretty funny, man. Uh, last night, but uh, you know, I, I hung in there. Did you think about bailing by, by nah. any chance? I didn't think about bailing. I mean, I was just I was just lounging on the couch, relaxing. I was I wasn't reaching for the remote. I was I was just gonna watch the game. 
you know, I, I, I mean, I, I knew they were going to win the game, but I knew they were going to make me sweat. So I just I already wrapped my mind around that. And I just took it easy, man. You know, yeah. just calm, cool, collected. No need to stress, you guys. Totally relax. <laughs> it's just, it's just, just go with the flow. Yeah, just right. Go uh, with it. Uh, and good luck telling that to an Eagles fan. But the, it, it, it was um, it was one of those nights where, like, it, it started off. Obviously, the people were tailgating. That people mm-hmm. were off. It's it's Christmas and the whole nine. But man, that was that was white knuckle city on that last drive. You know, when when the, the Tyrod Taylor's taking them down the field, you're like, really, man? Like, is this really going to happen? Like, that would have been such a bummer had they lost that game, man. It's unbelievable. <laughs> That would see a lot of changes with Patricia. Not really, right? I mean, it didn't um, feel like it, at least I have to go back and watch the L22, but it didn't really feel like it. I would have to go back and watch it also, but uh, I'm not ready to say I've seen these gargantuan changes yet. Um, I think he's being more creative with the personnel a little bit. Like, you know, there was a situation where he not, not saying I agree with the move, but there was yeah. a situation where he had Nolan Smith playing the mic in the dime set. You know, there was right. A little um, different. You know, he, he he's getting more creative with the personnel. He's trusting the young guys a little bit more because he wants to, not because he has to. So, um, and also they're limited at linebacker. So you're going to see a lot of big nickel, a lot of dime. Mm. So, I mean, nothing, nothing transcended, nothing transcended from Matt Patricia's side. Nothing at all. Not, not quite. Yeah. Yeah, and if and in fairness, it's going to take him a little while, right? I mean, you think about everything that he's going to have to do. You can put your own twist on things for sure, and I think that's obviously what they want him to do. But there is still that sort of core defense that they're playing that Desai put in, and you're not going to flip all of that this late in the season. You're going to put your own tweaks on it. And doing it when they did it, I think, will allow him to be a little bit more aggressive. Um, you know, at, at then maybe he would have had he taken it over even later in this. Yeah, thing. yeah. So I think look, the, it's I, yeah. No, I was about to say uh, real quick. I, I think the theme should just go into the playoffs is let it come to you. It's going to come to you. Be patient. I think that's the one thing that's been lacking on offense. Just be patient and on defense. Um, lack of execution, lack of getting off on third down. But all, but again, just. It's going to let the game come to you. Let it let it take on let it let the identity form and then you maneuver within that. Yeah, so. and the good the good sign is offensively, we, we mentioned this earlier. I thought Hertz was much better taking what was given to him and not forcing as much. It was check downs, Gainwell, Calcaterra, Goddard. You, you saw mm-hmm. a little bit more of that. I'm encouraged by that. Again, I, I don't want this to sound like there wasn't anything to take out of the game. I think there was things to take out. There of was, the game Yeah, there were some moment. things that you could say, okay, I, li- I like that. I like what I saw there. But 100%. overall, I mean, like, but overall, I stand by them winning this game doesn't move the needle for me in terms of how well I expect them to do in the playoffs in comparison to Niners and Cowboys. It hasn't moved that. Only, and, I, and I'll say it again. The only thing that can change over these next few weeks is a, a Maybe a heightened sense of um, urgency or execution, right? right. Um, maybe, right. maybe, maybe we see them string together better drives, more complete games because of the competition. Um, maybe, we, maybe their confidence elevates because mm-hmm. of you know the winning and the dominating or whatever. Um, but as far as but as far as gauging them against playoff level competition, that ship has sailed. Now they got to go into the playoffs and just prove it. Yes. Yep. Absolutely. All right. Good stuff, man. Good stuff, Tone. Uh, thanks to everybody streaming, everybody listening, everybody in the chat. Uh, you uh, are coming up next as well with uh, Dan Cilio for the National Football Show. So that'll be yes, rolling sir. your way uh, next. And um, yeah, so next up, it will be the Cardinals and then it will be the Giants. And then we are on to the playoffs. All right, that'll do it for us, Tone. Great hanging with you as always, yeah, my friend. We won't be back in this um in this capacity until what next Monday? Uh that sounds about right. That sounds about right. Yeah. So we'll get a little time off. We're looking forward to that. So everybody have a great rest of your vacation. If you have time off, great. Enjoy it. If not, uh rain that new year in with fun. I guess I guess we will, will as well. So everybody enjoy Tone. Good seeing you, my friend. And uh we'll be back Likewise. at it soon. All right. Yep. All right, take, take care, care sir. everybody. Thanks.